I mentioned, obviously, Questy being the home of boxing now. Big fight coming up. Anthony Joshua versus Povetkin, September 22nd. I know it's a big one. I know you can't wait for that one as well. Can't wait for that one. It's absolutely a tasty fight. And you know what? The, here's the thing. Uh, even non-Anthony Joshua uh, fans are going to be backing Anthony Joshua, not because they wanted to beat Povetkin, but because they want the Deontay Wilder fight to happen. And if the D Deontay Wilder Tyson Fury f uh, fight happens, they'll be backing Deontay Wilder. Because what do you want? You want a Wilder Joshua fight where both fighters are coming off wins. So it's uh, the heavyweight. You should be a promoter, not a commentator. <laughs> Possibly. The heavyweight class has come to life. You've got to admit, I mean, we've got, we've got superstars now, Anthony Joshua, Povetkin himself. We've got De Deontay Wilder. My goodness, what a fighter. Explodes onto the scene and is, is doing absolutely brilliant for the heavyweight class. It had gone down a little bit, become uh, boring because of the Klitschko brothers. Yes, I said it. <laughs> but the exciting fighters that are coming through. Uh, boxing, what a, what a time to be alive. Remember, guys, you can catch that action on Questy Sports 1 and Questy iFlix. That's a great fight. September 22nd. Whatever you're doing on that day, cancel it because you don't want to miss Joshua versus Povetkin at Wembley Stadium. All right, let's go back to the action here now. Um, first fight of the night's coming up. Let's look at the tail of the tape for that fight. Yeah. It's going to be a good one. Absolutely going to be a good one. Martina Jahua. That's going to be our opening fight for tonight. Martina Jahua making her debut as well. And Ruiz Madondo hasn't got the victory yet, but she'll be going for the big win tonight if she can. Yeah, she'll be going for the big one. And uh, uh, facing a debutante, and I think uh, she'll be hoping to get her first win. Uh, she, she's been waiting for that one. Got two draws and a loss to her record in the three fights uh, that she's stepped into the squared circle. And so tonight, she'll be hoping that against this debutante, she can finally get that W. Do you think she'll be pressured on her debut? I mean, you're coming here, you're coming to a big crowd, Questy Sports, a big arena. Will she be nervous? This is combat sport, uh, Ade. You've got you to have, uh, you've got to be made of sterner stuff. So, uh, in truth, yes, there's a chance that she could be overawed by the occasion, but if she wants to, to progress in this sport that we love, she's going to have to be a, 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 bit, a bit tough and show that she's able to, 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 to live with the best. Yeah, no, I certainly agree. And I think... It's always good to see fighters on their debut as well. I mean, sometimes they get overall, sometimes they come in there and try and swing for the fences, so to speak. Sometimes they come in and box. It'd be good to see what she does. Does she come in and box? What does she do? It'll be interesting to see. Absolutely interesting to see. And also good to see that uh, the fans in Harare have certainly turned out here at the International Conference Center uh, to watch some great fighting, some great boxing that's brought to you by uh, Quesa Sports and Color Coda Promotions. And uh, uh, that's another thing, isn't it? It's great for the fighters, but it's great for the fans too, isn't it, Adi? Yeah, I think both of them kind of kind of feed off each other, if you, really, if you know if you think. No matter what, I mean, you can't have a big fight here without no fans. And you can't have a fans without a big fight. They need each other. And I think it's going to be, it's going to make for a fantastic night of boxing. I can't wait for it. Let's go to our MC, the special MC of the day, Hugo Ribatica, to introduce the first fight for us. A very good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Queste Friday Fight Night. Five flights on the boxing card this evening, including our main fight, which is a WBF Africa Cruiserweight title bout over 10 rounds. A warm welcome to those of you that are here with us in Harare and those thousands that are watching across the continent on KS1 and Kwesi iFlex. Ladies and gentlemen, a big thank you to our sponsors who have made Kwesi Friday Fight Nights are possible. A big thank you to Econet, Faithwear and Kwesi Sports. We're absolutely delighted that we have a promotion running this evening. Buy any iFlex bundle tonight and you could win a Huawei Y6 device, many, many Cressa caps and several umbrellas. And all you have to do, ladies and gentlemen, is visit the Cressa activation stand outside to enter. Bundles will start from as little as $1 over 3,000 shows to watch an iFlex. And all you've got to do is buy a dollar worth of bundles and download the app. And tonight, our very first fight is an international female lightweight bout over four rounds. Introducing our fighters. 
fighting in the blue corner. Coming from Namibia, Martina Tajahua. She can't know it. She's walking. She's running to the ring. And uh, oh, the, the, the nervousness is definitely gone as soon as they step through that rope. 100%. You cross those ropes and you've got to deliver. You stand and deliver, as they say in the old adage. And it looks like she's ready to deliver as well. As you say, as you pointed out, wasn't walking to the ring, ran to the ring, ready to get this debut over and done with, get it under her belt and move on to the great future that, uh, that uh, beckons. Yeah, she's trained. Trained by Gabriel Moya, fantastic trainer, trainer for Lucas and for Luma. But she's got a good corner. Can she deliver? Fantastic crowd reception for her. Amazing crowd reception. Great reception for her. Obviously, on debut, that's what you need when the fans can get behind you. My goodness, what more would you, uh, could you ask for? And her opponent, a local favorite from Zimbabwe. Let's give it up for local favorite, Revai Madundu. Here comes Revai Madundu, the local favorite from Zimbabwe. Hasn't registered a win yet. One draw, two losses. Will be the time. Will this be the day she gets that W? Yeah, she, she, she hopes to get that W today because she's facing a debutante. And when your nickname is the General, you certainly got to stand and deliver, don't you? Because you can't, you don't get the name of the General without being able to deliver. I agree. We might have to change her name if she doesn't win tonight. The General has to deliver, and I don't know. With this crowd, she's definitely got an advantage. 100%. And the crowd already showing their partisanship. Yes, we thought there was a good uh, reception for our opponent, Chahua, but certainly this is the local favorite. The crowd getting behind her already. Fantastic crowd reaction. I always love when the crowd are not silent, but noisy and vocal. And it's fair to say tonight we've got a noisy and vocal crowd. And in truth, it's only going to get worse as we get deeper into this car. Absolutely. Car. Fantastic. Introducing our fighters, fighting out of the blue corner with a record of three fights, zero wins, two losses, and one a draw. All the way from Namibia, Martina Tijahua. Her opponent fighting out of the red corner with a record of three fights, zero wins, two losses, and a draw. Zimbabwe's Revai Madondo. Our referee for the bout is Diana Makumbe, judges Jokonya Kingston, Francis Nender, and Ezwal Ndlobu. Here we go. Let's have a look and see what the... I always like to hear what the referee says. I know it's the most basic of instructions, but for me, it's just, it's just principle. I need to hear what they're saying. 100%. <laughs> if you're a fighter, you could hear it a lot, couldn't you? Referee, just check in the gloves of Badondo there. Something that really should be done before they come out. Female referee, female fight. Female referee, female fight. And it's uh, very interesting that there's a check of the gloves uh, before when we're already in the ring. And as you quite rightly pointed out, this should have been done backstage, as it she, were. She's even checking the boots, yep. um, which is normally kind of resembled in football. <laughs> you normally left that for football, not boxing, but... <laughs> Well, later you've, on, got, you've got to tick the boxes, right? Later on in September, we're going to Wembley Arena, so <laughs> we might as well start early. <laughs> we might as well start early. Yeah, I don't know what the hold-up is. Um, I think the referee's just looking with the timekeeper. He's going to make sure, let me see, that you get the minutes. Remember, female boxing is two minutes around. Yeah, two minutes not around. Not three yeah. minutes around. So I just want to maybe clarify that. Oh, this one's going to go for four rounds. the times if i say break you break if i say stop you stop go to your corners and wait for the i didn't hear what she said but i'm going to pretend she said keep it clean <laughs> keep it tidy and make the best woman win yeah i think that's what I she think, said I, I think that's that, that about sums it up yeah, yeah. I, think, I think so it's close because anything further than that would be partisan, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah if you said that, yeah, you know, let the home fighter win, yeah. I, you know, there's a problem there. There'll be a big problem. 
What a great way to start Friday fight night on uh, Quest S Sports with the ladies' fight. And uh, as we said, a debutante, always great to watch a debutante. Either they, they explode onto the scene or they learn a lot. I, I agree, and you almost feel like with the crowd here, but it's fantastic they get to fight in front of this crowd. Normally with debutants, normally with people with only three or four fights, you normally have really small hall shows. Maybe in front of a man and his dog. <laughs> yeah, they've got a few thousand people here, and they're gonna they're gonna enjoy it as well. And that's what that's what boxing is about. Yes, it's serious. Yes, it's, it can be dangerous sometimes, but you've got to enjoy it. You've got to enjoy it. Well, here we go. Did they check in? I think it's fair to say there's going to be no feel around. No, there's not, no feel around whatsoever. Madonna's landed some really big punches there. She, and she's boxing as well. It looks a bit wild, but she's trying yeah. to set things up with her left and then land with the right. And and what you what you got from Jahua is that she doesn't want to conserve any of her energy. She wants to explode straight away. And she wants to turn this into a street fight. Yeah, what, what I've noticed with Jahua she has a really wide stance, and I wouldn't be surprised if there wasn't a kickboxing record behind her. That's behind the kickboxing stance that she's got there. Certainly. And for someone on their debut, look at her technique. She's got, she's really compact. You wouldn't watch her and think this is her debut. No, you wouldn't. Uh, that, 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 that wide stance you mentioned there, this is going to give her a bit of balance as Madonna explodes. Remember, we have Martina Joua in the white from Namibia versus the local favorite, Revaya yeah, Madondo in the red and black with the blue strip. And so far, it's a difficult round to score. It's like Madondo is definitely the aggressor. I, I feel like Joua is probably landing the cleaner punches. Yeah. Cleaner punches, and uh, also Madondo was sucked into that whole poor uh, mentality, which we see kicking off again now. Again. Madonna is fighting like someone has stolen something from her. She <laughs> has someone she has has to to fight. <laughs> because she is swinging for the fences here. <laughs> yeah, almost, look, look, if I see we see the world fight like this. Yeah. Yeah. One of those punches are gonna land soon. If she keeps on swinging like that, one's gonna land. And, and, and they will. And so Jahula just needs to bide her time. And as you said, land the more telling blows, score the points. And who knows if this goes the distance. She could win on debut. Yeah, look, very, very good first round. The crowd I might be I, I think I look, it's, it's very Sorry. difficult to be crit critical to someone on their debut, even someone with four fights. But they both need to just calm down a little bit. I can clearly see why they're excited. Sorry. Just calm down a little bit. And, and I think that it, it will make for a good fight. It will. And there was a bit of a feel around, but it came sort of midway through that first round where it looked like they were trying to recover the, their, their energy more so than uh, uh, try and box. Yeah. And then they started exploding again and it became a brawl. Again, I, I know we've said this before, but what an amazing atmosphere. I mean, this atmosphere Phenomenal. really is a bit special, isn't it? Phenomenal. I, I can't wait for the main event already. It's going to explode in here. And, and the thing is this, that the fans keep filing in. And so by the time we get to the ma main bout, this place is going to be overloaded. And with this atmosphere, it should be phenomenal. Yes, I agree. I'm not quite sure. We might have to restart the clock here. I think we've started the clock, but I, I don't know. The referee... Oh, but it looks like she left her mouth on. So I'm not quite sure what happened there. We're a minute 41 into that already. I'm not sure if it's going to be a short round, which ah, well, no, no, no. the clock, which is good. <laughs> I, think, I think we got it wrong. We do not need a ring. All we need is a phone booth for these ladies. All they want is a phone booth and they want to get it on, don't they? It's a, it's a street fight. <laughs> Jawu has got to be very careful. She boxes well, but every time she goes backwards, she puts her head up in the air. She does. And she's going to get caught with that. And, and, and her guard goes down, so you can see that, listen, it's, it's a function of it being her debut. But I think her defensive stance needs to be a lot better as she goes on, because that guard dropping, their fighters will hurt you. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and I mentioned this earlier, but she's got a very good trainer. Gabriel Moyo is a very good trainer. And that's something he needs to pick up on. 
entertaining the first fight of the night. Woo, 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 I mean, if you're at home woo, watching this on Questy Free Sports, you have to admit this is entertaining. Woo, woo. Get up. Get up, get up, Here's a kicker, though, I think. A street fight is great, but it drains your energy. Absolutely, and you can already see Madongo already maybe not throwing as many punches as he did in the first yep. minute here. Yep. More swinging again, and those swinging punches, especially when you miss, they take a lot of energy out. They take a lot of energy, and when your energy goes down, the reason we're talking about the energy is that your guard goes down, and when your guard goes down, you leave an opening for your opponent, and so J J Jahua, if she can buy your time, there's going to be an opening in this oh, fight. There we go. Beautiful yeah. There we go. Jahua. Again, right to the bush. Punch up, but Dondo comes back again. Madondo's does start, she's looking tired, isn't she? Yeah, <laughs> she is. And you know what? The great thing about calling a fight like this, you don't have to use any of the technical terms. This is just a brawl. Yeah, this is, I think in the 60s they'll say this is a barn brawl. <laughs> this, this, is, this is a barn brawl. And I wonder if it's going to go to this at all. Oh, the bell went wow, the bell. punches after. <laughs> From, from her corner, her corner's letting her know, Madondo, that she needs to box more because there is an opening for her. This is a debutante. Her guard is down. We've seen it. So no doubt her corner's seen it as well. And if she can take advantage of that, she could stop her in this round. You just wonder if Madondo's got the power. I kind of feel like Jahua could have a bit more power than Madondo. Madondo's landed a few clean and Jahua just walked through them, if I'm honest with you. It's true. It's true. And uh, Jahua has a, has a good way of evading the punches just like just she did there. Yeah, yeah. that tall movement is very good. Yeah. But then she gets involved in this. Yeah. She gets tired. That's more like yeah, push her off, create some distance, and then use that big big left hand which she showed you can. Yeah. There's, there's that big left hook. Swing and a miss. Madonna wants this, doesn't she? She wants that win. She really wants it. And Madondo has, has got a, a bizarre style when she starts going into brawl mode because the only piece I can describe it is it's a hammer throw, isn't it? It's a punch that comes down. It, it is actually. I mean, over -arm technically, right. it's illegal. <laughs> illegal, yeah. I mean, I don't know how the referee stops it because every punch she throws, she throws like that. It's almost like when she gets mad, like now, now she just throws it and she goes. This is wonderful. What a way to start the night. You, you clearly have a boxer versus a brawler. A brawler. And nine times out of ten, the brawler does win. And Madondo is on her way to winning this fight. It's a she close is. fight, but she's on her way to winning it. She is. Because in that brawl, she's landing some telling blows. This is it. Oh, good oh. shot there from Jua. The crowd said all behind us as well. They, they felt that with her. Again, she's coming now. She's coming forward. It's Tajua. She's landing a bit of shots. It's Tajua here. It's a fatigue. It's a fatigue. Her guard has dropped as Madondo. And Tajua is now taking advantage of that. She needs to shake her off. She's there for the taking for Tajua. Ten seconds of round number three. Very, very difficult rounds to score. I wouldn't want to be the judge here trying to score these rounds. I mean, what do you like? Do you like the aggression? Do you like the punch bar? I don't know what you like here. Very, very difficult. It's difficult to call. Again, they look like one of the three punches after. And, and, and here's the thing that Madonna comes out of her, her, her corner swinging and then lands a few telling blows. Jahua stabilizes and comes back into the fight and then lands some, some counting blows. So it's difficult to call because the numbers are so close. Yeah, no, I agree. It's almost like both of them are almost countering the other. Again, a very difficult. Big punches for Madondo. Yeah, and you can see that when the round started, Madondo was definitely in the ascendancy. 
and then she gets sort of gets tired towards the end of the round. Jahua comes back into it, but just does Jahua do enough to get back into the fight? I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna call it now. It's gonna be a draw. It's, a, it's impossible to split this. It really is. Madonda will be gutted. She wants that W. She will be. She'll be very gutted. Here we go, final round of this four-round fight in the super lightweight division. Ravai Madondo in the red and blue with the black top. There's no defense from Zimbabwe versus Jahua from Namibia in the white. A -a Again, Barry, I don't know how to score this. I'm not going to try and score this. I'm just going to pretend it's a draw. Difficult to score. I'm, I'm inclined to agree with you. Chances are it could be a draw. But now, neither of these fight fighters have, had, have boxed throughout this bout. Agreed. And had they boxed, they had a good off. Right up, a card, come on! Right up, a card! upset with the performance, for sure. Right up, a card! It's a fantastic fight for the fans. In terms of boxing, boxing technically, it's not the greatest. It's not the greatest, no. And that's a danger, isn't it? When you're when you're facing a debutante, they can suck you into that poor mentality. Right up, a card! Right up, a Click out of it. Right up, a card! You can do yourself a disservice. No, you're right. There's a lot of top professionals that this is their style. And you've got to be an extremely good boxer to fight someone like Madonna because you've got to step away and land those punches. But she just keeps on coming. She keeps coming. She yeah. just keeps on. You know them horror movies when the, the bad guy, you can't run away from the bad guy. That's Madonna. <laughs> That's Madonna. She's like the horror movie, but you can't run away from her. <laughs> well, she is called the general. She's fighting a fighter, Jahua, who's called the problem. That's her alias. And she's got a problem right now. Her no, problem no, she, is Madonna. Yeah, honestly. She's doing some good stuff, but I mean, th th you don't want to fight Madonna in your debut. No, <laughs> you, you really don't. It's an awkward fight. There's non-stop punches. Oh, she holds you. She holds. Look at this. I even thought I saw a headbutt there. I mean, she does everything naughty. She does, and she's probably going to get the win here. I mean, and you know what? You're right because we're 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 called it a draw after the third round, but in this round, she's won this like, round. She's she? won this round, and this one may be the swinging round. Last ten seconds. I guarantee you, these ladies are going to fight after the bell. The bell's <laughs> going to go. I'd expect someone to throw a punch here. I think they're going to be fighting all the way to the dressing room. Well, I hope not. We might have to get a cameraman to follow them. That's the end of the fight. I don't know if they know, but that is the end of the fight. <laughs> There's got a bit excited. She's coming to the ring with, with round five car, but it's a four-round fight. Definitely a four-round four fight. And what's interesting to see, what's interesting to see, Ade, is that both fighters went to their corners. None of them claimed the fight. Yeah. They all went and stood. I agree. So I they don't know. Knows, yeah. Which makes for which makes for a really, really good fight. <laughs> Um, can you hear me, Barry, at the back? Barry, can you hear me? Again, the crowd enjoying themselves. The fight is unsure. As you said, no one knows that they've won. I, I think they thought there might have been a couple more rounds. I suppose so, but you, you found that the corners didn't slip in the stool, so they know that the, 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 the fight was over. And yet again, both fighters just stood in their corners, didn't claim the fight. So I feel pretty good that we can't call it, because the fighters themselves don't know who won the fight. Exactly, exactly. Who does win the first fight of the night? Good luck to the judges. And our MC, Hugo Rimatiki, is on hand to give us the decision. This could be a close one, no decision yet, so it could be a close one. 
Yeah. And it's a four round fight. How difficult is it to tally up the cards? <laughs> oh, what do you need here? Well, I wouldn't be so harsh, Ade. You said earlier in the fight that you said you didn't you didn't want to be a judge in this fight because it was difficult to call. So I think it was just that difficult, eh? No, no, no. You, you're right. I take it back. I apologize on behalf of the judges. This is a difficult fight to score. I, I think it's going to be a draw. I, I really do think it's going to be a draw. All right, let's go back to our MC, Hugo from a teacup with the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a result. Judge Juan scores it 40-37, Revai Madondo. Judge Two scores it 38 points apiece. Judge Three scores it 39-37. And your winner by points decision from Zimbabwe, Revai Madondo. There you go, there's the winner, Revai Madondo. It was close. It was very close. close and it was close. It was very close and uh, like we said, and I would say that last round is what did it for Revai Madondo. Because in that last round, she came out, it wasn't uh, the cleanest boxing, but she landed some clean blows that counted for her. So I think that last round pro probably swung it the way of Revai Madondo. She finally has her first, first win. Her record now stands at one win, two draws and one loss. Yeah, no, I think it's fantastic that she gets the win. I think it's good that she gets the win on home soil as well. So well done to Madondo. Unlucky as you are, she'll come back again. She's a good boxer. But well done for Madondo. And look, it really does kickstart the night. You heard the crowd pop there. It really does get the, it really does get the, the crowd really excited for the next fight. It certainly does. And uh, we got a full bill of fight here on Friday Fight Night on Quesse Sports. Thank you for joining us. Next up is Chieta Homakomba taking on Patricia Apollo. Yeah, there's Patricia Apollo. I, I've watched her throughout the weigh-ins yesterday, today, and, and she really is in fantastic shape. And, and she's ready to go as Patricia Apollo. Former kickboxer, now turned boxer, unbeaten in her professional career so far. But there's the there's the, the person that caused the upset last time, they're beating Mona Lisa Simbanda. There's Chita Okomo, and look, this is gonna be a fantastic fight. Don't you go anywhere, we'll be right back. At World Remit, we started with a single goal, to create a better way to send money to Africa, a way that's faster and easier. To mobile, to bank accounts, to thousands of locations across Africa, anytime, anywhere. That's why millions of customers use our service. With World Remit, you can easily receive money from family and friends today. World Remit, a better way to receive money. Did you know you can watch your favorite TV shows and sports games on the go with an active Quetzal TV subscription? Simply download the Quetzal TV app. Wait for the app to automatically install. Open the Quetzal TV app and register with your account number so that we can verify your subscription. Let's give it a whirl. Find what you want, press play, and watch for free. That we gotta do is break the FOMO and don't miss out on the freshest entertainment to watch on up to four devices. Fabulous. Buy the Quesa TV decoded today for only 10,960 Naira. Available at any of these Quesa branded dealers. With free installation and flexible subscription plans, you can afford to catch every moment. Get the Quesa TV decoded today and get your first month free. Quesa Beyond TV. 
and it's executed it perfectly and it gives his side the lead here with a fantastic fantastic effort here The final day of the regular season in the WNBA could potentially be the final home game in the career of Lindsey Whalen, who earlier this season announced her retirement from the league. Whalen! Whalen, that's a tough guard on Deladon. Took it right to her and got the front rim. There you go, Lindsey Whalen. <laughs> Lindsey Whalen leads the court. So let's bring up Lindsey Whalen as we celebrate Way Day here in Minnesota. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Welcome back to Quesay Friday Fight Night. The wonderfully entitled A Fistful of Dollars from the International Conference Center here in Harare, Zimbabwe. Barry, fantastic first fight to open the card. Fantastic first fight, and uh, the crowd certainly enjoyed it because uh, it turned out to be a brawl at times. Uh, but when they boxed, they certainly showed us uh, something. Obviously, uh, Revai Madondo getting the win there, finally getting a win. Now her, her record looking much better than it was. Absolutely. Let's have a look for the town of tape for our next fight between... A, a girl that I think might go places, Patricia Apollo versus the very, very dangerous Chita Omokoma from Zimbabwe. Let's have a look at the weigh-in from yesterday for these two ladies. As you can see, Patricia in just amazing shape. Amazing shape. And, and the one thing with that uh, being a kickboxer helps her is that her leg strength is fantastic. Now, people will wonder what leg strength assists with is that she, her punches are going to have amazing power. Look at her traps. She is. Are you jealous of those traps? <laughs> oh I'm my jealous. God! She is in phenomenal shape. No, she is in phenomenal shape. Again, if this goes the distance, well, you got to back Apollo, don't you? And, and you just never know about this. She's a homokomba. She, she, her first three fights were draws. Yeah. She then takes on the very experienced Monalisa Zimbanda. Monalisa was a clear favorite, and she won. Stopped her in the second round, and obviously claimed the vacant. Zimbabwe and female lightweight touch, so you never know. I, I, I was here, I was with her for that fight, and it was phenomenal. She exploded in that second round, and in truth, deserved to win. All right, let's go to our MC of the night, Hugo Ribatika, to introduce both fighters for us. Thank you, gentlemen. For those of you that are just joining us and came in a few minutes ago, thank you for joining us here at the Harada International Conference Center where we give you Quest Air Friday Fight Night. Coming up is our second bout. And this is an international female lightweight bout over eight rounds. Fighting out of the blue corner from Uganda, Patricia Appelot. Here comes Patricia Appelot from Uganda, actually now based in Hungary, um, trained and managed by her partner. You're gonna see him behind her now. A former kickboxer, a national Ugandan kickboxing champion who crossed over to boxing and so far is perfect. Four fights, four wins, and she'll try and make it her fifth today. She will, and we talked about her shape. You'll see it when she takes off her, her, her top and is ready to box. She's she's in some shape, and it's Patricia Mahomba-Komba, uh, she is a Mahomba-Komba, isn't careful with this one. She went over the top rope, and that just shows you that she's, she's got ability. She's done a Prince Nassim Hamid and she jumped over the top ropes. She's got to win now. She's got to she's win. She's got to win now. You can't do that and lose. You can't you do that and can't. lose. There she is, 27 years old, weight 61, height 160. They're, they're very evenly matched. That's going to be a great fight. And her, her opponent, ladies and gentlemen, fighting out of the red corner from Zimbabwe, Chiedza Homokoma. 
I, I would say I'm surprised by the crowd reaction, but I'm not. They really do support their local fight, which is fantastic. They really do, and uh, cheers to Hombakomba. Since that fight, where she stopped Mona Lisa Svanda, her level of support has grown in Zimbabwe. And now the fans know that she's got some ability. She can do job this one. I feel like this is going to be a war. I've got the feeling this is going to be something a bit special. Coming into Cardi B. Do you like a bit of Cardi B? Cardi B. And you're coming to Cardi B. Go over the top rope. I'm not sure who shades it here because you can't come in to Cardi B and then lose. Yes, yeah, it's real. Need to check if her boots have got red bottoms. Yeah. <laughs> Introducing our boxers uh, fighting out of the blue corner with a record of uh, four fights, uh, four victories, and uh, two by way of knockout from Uganda, Patricia Apollon. And her opponent from Zimbabwe with a record of three fights, one win, zero losses, and two draws. Popular by most Zimbabwean standards, Chiesa, the Queen Tiger, Homa Koma. Your referee, ladies and gentlemen, for this bout is Diana Makumbe. The judges, Jokonya Kingston, Francis Nendere, and Eswell Ndlovu. I think we're going to have a good fight with this one. I, I really do. I just... Homokomba just seems so confident. I mean, look, Patricia Apollo, we know is a good fight, but Homokomba, you're right, that, that win against Simbanda has raised not only her profile, but her confidence as well. This could be a good one. It certainly has. This is going to be a good one. And uh, in terms of conditioning, I think uh, certainly Apollo shades it. Apollo oh, shades the condition that every single person on this card. <laughs> every man on this card, she shades it. Including, including the commentary team. In <laughs> and Definitely the commentary team. Especially the commentary team. No, honestly, it, I mean, if you get awards for being in shape, then she's won every single award here tonight. But you don't. And I feel like she's a Mama Comba. You never know. I mean, you never know. Yeah, um, the surprise element is a big thing in boxing and any sport, to be, to be honest. And she's got that. Nikita the Tiger, the, the Queen Tiger, they call her. And certainly Chieta Hombakomba has got the surprise element. So it'll be interesting to see how she approaches this one. Because she knows she's facing a fighter who's well conditioned. Okay, let's see if we can listen into the ref. My commands are all the time. If I say stop, you stop. So I say break, you break. Protect yourself. Think you all get to your corners and go. Okay, I didn't hear, but I'm going to translate. Good fight. Good best woman here. I'm glad you speak referee. Lightweight division. Bugs. Chita Hobakomba in the red and black from Zimbabwe. And Patricia Apollo. Bugs. Now facing Hungary, but from Uganda in the white and black. Let's see what these ladies can do. I'm expecting a good one here. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Oh, she lands that. She lands that right. But she's head wide open, wide open all the time. She's missing with that right, and then the counter punch is what's landing and hitting her head. And she's got it. She's got to find a counter for that. And I hope her corners are uh, realizing that they need a counter for that because if they don't, this will be a fairly short fight. Good little punch down for Jabra. She moves out of pocket. Good little right hand. They stare at each other there for a few seconds. But very, very good first round. Very interesting, very entertaining. Uh, a lot more boxing in this one. And you can see that both corners have thought about a strategy in this fight and are trying to implement it. But the thing is, it's a counter strategy that's going to get them over the line. Agreed. Have a look at some of the action from the very, very first round here. I, I feel like if they get into a brawl, a brawl is going to favor Obakambo all day. Most certainly. And you'll find that I think uh, Apollo is going to try and control the ring as she was doing in that first round. Keep the center of the ring and keep Obakambo moving because she reckons that if they go the distance, if they go deep into this fight, she's got more conditioning, better conditioning than Obakambo. Obakambo will get tired and that opening will open up. We're going round number two of this eight round fight between Jita Hobokomo and Bisha Apolo from Uganda. I actually believe that Hobokomo could have won that first round. She could have. Yeah. And here we go, the controlled action of Apolo. Just going on physique, you must give the feeling that Apollo could be stronger. I, I think Hobokomo is a stronger one. It looks like that. Every time so they engage and both land punches, it seems like Apollo doesn't really want to engage. Bugs! No, she doesn't. And it looks like it looks like the blows. Like that one. They're doing some damage. I have a feeling. Apollo just pointed something out there that it's almost as if to say Hobokomo doesn't have a gum shield. I'm not quite sure what I can see, but she seems to ask the ref about it, and the referee kind of dismissed it. Oh, she definitely does have it. She has a chance. I wonder what she's complaining or talking about. That right hook is missing. But I'll tell you now, if one of those lands... It's good night, nurse. Yeah. One thing she looks very composed. Look at her. Very composed. Very, look, she's enjoying herself. Why is she smiling? And, and normally with boxers, once you feel your opponent's power, when you know you can take it, you, you don't mind being in a brawl. And I feel like she's felt Apollo's power, and she's not too afraid of it. She, she's not too afraid of it. And she's just trying to protect herself and cover herself. And is able to obey anything that Apollo is throwing at her. Apollo, for the experience of the Zoom, looks very ragged here. I, I expected a more technical fight from Apollo. Bomba shaded that round as well because lots of swinging from Apollo, but she's missing a lot too. Again, good action in the second round. Omakoma definitely looks, I think, the more composed of the two. And, and I think she's a right hand away from causing real damage here. Absolutely. Like we said, that right hand, if that lands, I think it's going to be good night for Chieta Omakoma. And then also, you look at the two fighters in their corners now. Apollo dancing to the music that's playing. Chieta Omakoma sitting on her stool. So you got to think to yourself, in terms of conditioning, Apollo has no problems. But she's going to need to land some telling blows or on points. This goes the distance. Momba Komba might just shade this fight. Yeah, you're right. It was almost, she was almost playing like a psychological game with her there. Saying, look, I'm fit. You're not. I'm going to stand. And, and you're, you're 
on your feet. If it goes to eight rounds, then you're in trouble. Will it go eight rounds is the question. The question is, is one of those right hooks going to land from Apollo? Because if it does, I will. Oh, there was one there. Landed again a big one as well then as Apollo. Omokumba definitely took a step back there. She realizes she's in a fight now. But she's still dangerous as Omokumba. She's still there. Still dangerous. But Apollo's landing some big ball. Sw swing and a miss there. There it goes again. That right hook is missing now. But I'll tell you, it's just going to be one. One landing. And this fight could well be over. Patricia Apollo really does need to set a punch up. She needs to use that jab. She's not used it all night. She's got to set a punch up. You can't be throwing that right hand. It's so telegraphed. It's easy for Omokombo to avoid. Yeah, and you see, the thing is, as you, as you point out, the fact that it's tele telegraphed and it's coming from so deep, almost coming from behind her, almost coming from behind her, Omokombo is able to see it coming and duck. Now, what Omokombo is then doing is that her counter punching is then hurting Apollo. Omokombo, very naughty. I don't know if we saw that. We got a replay. Omokombo, no. Oh, the hell? Of Apollo. Was that a slip? Was that a slip? Oh, I thought that was a knockdown. I want to see that again. I think Ap Apollo was pointing out that she slipped. There was no standing eight count. Nothing from the referee at yeah. all. But I don't know. Oh, another oh. big one from. I didn't hear the bell, so in truth, she had every right to carry on fighting. Can't hear the bell. She's laughing with her corner as Apollo. I think she's she's loving this. She's starting to enjoy it a little bit. I don't know how you can enjoy this, <laughs> but she's enjoying it. Did you hear a bell then? I didn't hear a bell. It was very difficult. Well, back to the replays. And like we said earlier, she's got to jab a little bit more with that left set up and fight. Oh, no, that was a knockdown. That was a knockdown. That was a knockdown. That was clearly a knockdown, Merrin. That should be a 10 8 round. But Homer Combo, that was a knockdown, clearly. Absolutely. She's got away with that as Apollo. And the referee should be more on it, really. Yeah. The referee was in a good place and position and still didn't see that. She has a Homer Combo sitting at every time that she goes to her corner. Looking, still looking confident. Doesn't look like a hair that she's ragged in any way. Apollo standing again. Honestly, I think we might have to visit Apollo in the gym tomorrow and understand how fit she is because she stands in between rounds. It's like this is nothing. Not interested at all. Yeah, not interested. Because she's, she's, she's putting us to shame. She, she really, well, speak for yourself. I, I, I still have what I want to do. I can't move. I can't move. Round four of eight. I remember, two minute rounds for female boxing. Apollo started this round and she ended, I think, in the last round. Oh, she's landing big blows here. Sometimes I don't know if Humber Combo is, I don't know if she's out of the time. It's very difficult to see. Very difficult to see, yeah. But the one thing I've noticed now is that we were complimenting Humber Combo all the time. There's a counter now coming from Apollo. And she's, she's, she's giving her that, that uh, uppercut. It's landing quite a bit. Yeah, I'm not sorry. 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 And if they do have a fight, then she can have all those big punches and I think we'll have no doubt for this round. Is there a good answer for you now? I think Holma Kongo is hurt. Yeah, she's hurt. Because her guard, her guard is down. Yeah, she's trying to hide it with some show boats here, but she's hurt. Those punches from Apple, I think, are starting to take their toll. They're tough, yeah. And she's probably going to need a big haymaker to kind of turn this one around. I think Apple is starting to enjoy it a little bit as well. Better from Apollo, a jab. Finally, we're seeing a jab. Again, she tries to throw it. Last 20 seconds of round number four. Apollo is hurt, but she's still there. And while she's still there, she's still dangerous. She's going to have to counter this because Apollo, I believe, has shaded this round. He's 
lots to do here. Ask her when you go to a gym tomorrow. I'm not joining you. And no, no, um, that was a lie. I'm checking out of that. She just, Fuck. she's obviously extremely fit. And you wonder if she's the kind of woman that would love to fight three minute rounds rather than two minutes. Absolutely. Big blow. Just, oh, another big right hand from Apollo. She's starting to land that right hand now. She's more going straight with it rather than swinging it. She's turning it. She's turning it a little bit into. To a jab more so than the hook that we've seen earlier. Yeah. And I feel like she's getting more power for it rather than those big window punches. We talked about the power in those legs. We talked about the conditioning in her legs. This is where it's going to carry her because she's able to stand strong, get a low center of gravity, and throw that jab, and it's going to do some damage to her. Yeah, you're right. I think the technique is so important in boxing. As strong as Homokonga is, because she doesn't throw punches right, she loses a lot of power. Apollo now is really starting to turn that body with those punches and generate a huge amount of power. And I think that's what's telling her in this fight. I think that's why she's probably going to go on to win. Again, though, I wouldn't want to be a judge for in this one. Uh, this one's another one. I can't lie. I'm looking at it now and I'm quite envious of that. Here's Homakomo looking completely the opposite. Yep. Um, doesn't want to be there. Could Tired. think of many places she'd yes. rather be. Box. 
Here we go. Round number six of this eight round fight here. Patricia Apollo from Uganda in the white and I'd, I'd call it dark blue. And Homokopa in the red. That's not. Oh, Apollo wants to end Apollo it. Apollo wants to end it. And she, I think Homokopa's almost doing a last stand here. She is. Referee needs to break this up. But Apollo is is sure that she's got Homokopa on the proverbial and metaphoric ropes and wants to end this fight. You know, credit to Homokopa. Um, she, she's still there, still throwing punches. And, and you, you got, I mean, we, we obviously talk about Apollo's fitness, but even Homer Combo, you've got to be fit to be in there. You do. It's not easy. Even though they're two minute rounds, you've got to be really fit. And to take some of the punishment that exactly. she has. So she's still standing, that's credit to her. But the legs, the legs are definitely gone now. The legs are gone, the, the punches are labored. It's a matter of time now. It is. And you really, if you're Apollo and you're her corner person, you've got to tell her just a bit more pedal to the metal and you can get her out. You get, certainly. I think that was a discussion earlier because she exploded in this round, but it's sort of taken her foot off the pedal Agreed. again. Agreed. And uh, seems you've played with her opponent. I mean, you wonder if Apollo's tired. I mean, all those muscles do carry a lot of lactic acid. It doesn't, uh, and, and, and you wonder if she's starting to feel the pace as well. And, and you can, you can, you can yes, see it in the way that she's throwing the punches now. She's feeling the pace of it. Obviously, she wants to put that, that strong demeanor across because it's a facade that she's made. Yeah. But that punch was, 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 was easily telling that Apollo too is feeling the pace of this. The referee, no, no, the referee's got to even. Have, have a word from Mama Combo or, or take a point away. She, she's constantly holding now. No, 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 no. The crowd's ended. She still wants to hold. It's, it's to keep herself upright. Her legs are gone. She's got nothing left in the tank. And in truth, Absolutely. the ref could have and should have stepped in in the last round, never mind this round. Yeah. No, absolutely. And this is the explosion at the start of the round where Apollo came out fast out of the blocks and tried to finish it. And they realized that Mombakomba still has a little bit about her. Oh, we got uh, we got uh, off screen at the moment. We got Apollo taking her first drink of water in this entire fight. Ladies and gentlemen, Apollo has taken a sip of water. That's big news. That is, that is big, big, big news. news. If we go another round, does she sit down? Does she possibly, sit down? Possibly. I think the bookmakers will be taking money on that. <laughs> you know, but, but while Omakonda is still there, you never know. Why is she still you there? You never know. You've seen the power in her last fight against Monalisa Samanda. She can definitely punch. Ah! And you never know. She's still there. All it takes is one telling blow. And everything swings in the other direction. Nikita, Absolutely. the Queen Tiger, they call her Omakonda. One thing these ladies do have in common, both of their favorite fighters are Leila Ali. Muhammad Ali's daughter, obviously, is a world championship boxer in the late 90s and early 2000 is their favorite fighter. I guess she was almost a springboard for a lot of these girls here to start fighting. Indeed, she was, she was like the, the, the first real superstar fighter, as Agreed. it were. And so, um, you know, similar to what, what Michael Jordan did for basketball, Tiger Woods for golf, Serena Williams for women's tennis, that uh, Leila Ali was the same. And so it's not surprising that they all draw inspiration from her. You, you, you just named and reeled off some amazing athletes there. <laughs> Michael Jordan, Tiger Woods. Wow. Don't forget Serena Williams. Oh, you know what? I, I've, I've said this. I'm going off topic now. I think Serena Williams is the best athlete of all time. I agree with you. No argument. No more effort. Referee finally gets both of them awarded. Seven rounds, but she does it. Crowd is starting to chant here. They want a rally. But she's being caught. Is on the corner. Every time she comes in and throws punches, she gets caught. Again, a very, very spirited effort from her. But the holding, the holding is 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 what's keeping her in this fight because she's able to breathe, recover. And then try and get that last burst, and you can look at, you can see it that Homba Komba knows that she is done, but she's trying to land that one punch. The corner, Patricia Apollo finally didn't have to push, push, 
Oh, 10 seconds left in round seven. It's going to be too late to do anything. So we are going to a round eight. And if, if I'm honest, Run. I didn't expect the round eight from the way Homba Comba looked in round five. In truth, we didn't expect it, but Homba Comba managing to make it to the eighth round, and that's credit to her. But I would say, on the balance of, of this fight, Apollo shading it for me. Do, 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 I was about to ask you, do, do you think Apollo's winning the fight convincingly? Will the I, judges see it any other way? I would say so. And uh, on the basis that there was there was a period round about the fifth round where Apollo came out and started boxing. And that's when she was landing the telling blows. And that those are the ones that counted. And I think if there's, if there's any round that's going to deliver for her, it will be the fifth and the sixth round that give her the fight. Yeah, no, absolutely. You're right. Even, even, even if the rounds have been close, Apollo has just done more. And, and all the holding from Homba Comba as well has been a bit annoying. It has, and I think, uh, listen, the judges are human, and so their scoring also is going to be coloured by that. But Apollo has come out, been very uh, controlled about her, 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 her movements. Yeah, I, I can't believe what I just saw. I think the referee went to the corner of Apollo and said, you need to stop holding. I think, uh, I think she got the wrong fighter. I there. think she has got the wrong fighter. Um, it's very easy to tell the difference between the two athletes. She can't really get this wrong, can she? Very easy. Second. So that was surprising. Here we go, round number eight. And another okay. hold by the two ladies. Yeah. What? A, legi a legitimate one that time. <laughs> and a touch of the gloves as well. Yep. That's as friendly as it gets. Now we go to war, hopefully, for the final round. Because she's landed some telling blows and have done some damage. Oh, big one as well. Took, took, the, took the head back of Homba Comba. She really is a strong woman to still be in there, taking all these punishments for, for eight rounds of punishment. Again, testament to her fitness and her strength as well. Certainly. She's taken some punishment. And like we said, Apollo looks like she shaded this. Oh my goodness. A big body blow there. Technique has gone out the window in this fight, ladies and gentlemen. This is now, as we say, a phone book fight. If you're watching for jabs and uppercuts and right hands, you're watching the wrong fight. That's how many ladies are just going to war in this last 20 seconds. Crowd have joined them as well. Both fighters out on their legs. They've given it all. This is what we like to see. Yeah, that's what I want to see. You can give everything. You don't want to go back to the change room knowing you could have given 10% more. You want to walk out of that ring absolutely exhausted knowing you've given everything you can. And both these fighters are going to be absolutely shattered. There goes the bell. What a fight by both these fighters. Now, honestly, both of them, very fit, great fight. I think Apollo shaded it, but we are in Zimbabwe. <laughs> oh, my God, we're in Zimbabwe and fighter. I'm not saying anything, but you never know. You never know. Apollo has been well received by the crowd and has been through her antics in the corner where she's been dancing and all sorts. Endeared herself to the crowd in quite a way. Here's some of the highlights from the final round, round number eight. Again, better boxing from Apollo. Better boxing. Stronger of the two as well. And so Apollo also showing, I think, different ways that she can box because even when they got into the phone booth, she was able to pull. When it came to the boxing, she was able to box. And Anderson, coming from a kickboxing background, you wouldn't expect it, but certainly fantastic ever by Apollo. That, that's a very good point you made. When they, when they ruled, she ruled. When they boxed, she boxed. She can do everything. Unfortunately for Hobba Hobba, she can only brawl for now. She can't really box right now, but I think there's a bright future for Hobba Hobba. Because she's definitely a strong woman, definitely courageous. The flags are out. But again, as in the previous fight, 
both fighters, none of them claiming the fight, just proud to still be in the square circle and to um, participate in such an epic brawl, an epic fight, needed to box, needed to brawl, did both with a flop. Yeah, I guess it'll be interesting to hear the scorecards. We obviously at ringside think Apollo won it, but it's what you like. And if the judges like the style of Homokoma, then you never know. Absolutely. Could this possibly be the result that you called on the previous one? A draw? Uh, I think Apollo would be disappointed with a draw. I think she's done enough to win. She's unbeaten. She doesn't want a draw on her record. And, and, and I think she'll get the win. I'd agree with that. I think she'll be disappointed with the draw. I think she, she, she believes she won this fight outright, not even shaded it. And I think it, in commentary as well, we're inclined to agree with her. I think Apollo certainly won this fight, was landing the more telling blows, did more damage, and in truth, the fight should go to her. What a great crowd, by the way. Very mixed as well. Males and females, very mixed. Phenomenal crowd. They're getting involved, and that's what you need. All right, let's go to our MC, Hugo Rickabata, with the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, the judges have come to a decision. Judge one calls it 77-79. Judge two, 77-80. Judge three scores it 77-80. And the winner, by unanimous points decision, Patricia Apollon! There's Patricia Apollo. Um, do, do you think she's happy? <laughs> A little bit, somewhat, but she looks ecstatic. She's absolutely loving it. That's what I love to see. Raw emotion. That raw emotion. Needed that win, got the win. I think she's a happy woman. She is indeed. And 77-79, 77-80, 77-80. Turned out to be a little bit closer than we expected, but Apollo fantastic. Yeah. Here's some of the action from the fight. It really started off as a barnstormer and then kind of faded away. But fantastic fight. And Patricia Apollo with the big win. Obviously, she moves to 5-0 and on her record. And she'll be hoping to get another, another win very, very soon. Love watching Kwesi? Yeah. I think he's coming around. Hi. Don't miss out on your favorite family-friendly shows. Download the Kwesi TV app. Wait for the app to automatically install. Open the Kwesi TV app and register with your account number so that we can verify a subscription. Find what you want and press play. First thing that we gotta do is break the FOMO and don't miss out on the freshest entertainment to watch on up to four devices. Fabulous. Buy the Quesi TV decoded today for only 10,960 Naira. Available at any of these Quesi branded dealers. With free installation and flexible subscription plans, you can afford to catch every moment. Get the Quesi TV decoded today and get your first month free. Quesi Beyond TV. As serious fans, you know your sports. Terrible job by Mark Easley. You want the whole story. There are no rules that say you have to give a certain number. And an in-depth analysis of the game. Some of his behavior on the field, it left a lot to be desired. He's trying to find ways of how he can get a result. Join me every Tuesday on Seriously Sport. Get ready, Zimbabwe. Kwese 
just revolutionized home entertainment. Snap, snap, snap it. Get the latest movies and shows. It is an ideal which I hope to live for and to achieve. All the best live sport and something for all ages. Watch on up to four devices. Quisay, Beyond TV. La Copa Conmebol Sudamericana. At the end of your day, ours is just getting started. Good evening, Africa. Welcome to Quesa Sports. We are the Quesa Sports News Team. Wow. Live on air. Monday to Friday. Online. Any device. Anywhere. Sports news never stops. And neither do we. Never miss a thing. We'll keep you connected. Only on Quesa Sports. For the fan. Friday fight night, a fistful of dollars from the wonderful international conference center in Harare, Zimbabwe. Barry, the crowd are starting to come in now. They really are starting to build this place up. As, as we saw, I mean, we saw them streaming through the doors and it's really filled up here. And it's all in, in preparation for that big fight. It's coming, the uh, WBF Africa Cruiserweight title bout between Sting Conorenda and Tony Salem. Yeah, I agree. I can't wait to see this one. Lucas Ndafaluma. There he is, Lucas Ndafaluma, the IBO African middleweight champion with just one defeat versus the relatively unknown Hussein Itaba from Tanzania with a record of 4-1-2. and two. Obviously, Lucas, the big favorite, but this is boxing and you never know. Absolutely, with boxing you never know, but what you've got to look at is that Hussein Itaba first fight outside of Tanzania so for me getting out of your comfort zone as it were anything can happen and usually it's bad yeah no I agree and it's a big ask against Lucas and Napoleon who I think is the best midway in Africa but he's got a lot to prove we'll see what he can do today and we'll see if he can go on and do good things in boxing let's go to our MC Hugo Rubitika to introduce both fighters for us I don't know, thank you very much for being a part of it tonight and supporting our sponsors who have made this possible. A big thank you to Econet, Cressa uh, Sports and Faithwear. Our next bout, bout number three, and is the first of the title bouts. And this one is a WBF Intercontinental Middleweight title bout over 12 rounds. Fighting out of the blue corner all the way from Tanzania, Hussein Itaba! Here comes the man, Hussein Itaba. No, he's a winner for me already with this music. Absolutely, when you come out to the classics, that's always a good sign. Yeah, and I, I'm liking it. He's coming, he's jogging to the ring. Again, first fight outside of Tanzania. Will he be confident? Will he be nervous? Questions will be found out, questions will be answered in a few minutes. Yeah, he's a big boy as well. In uh, Tanzania, they call him tall. He certainly is. But the thing is that he's fighting a, a fighter who's actually one centimeter taller than he is. So in Tanzania, they haven't seen anyone taller than tall. But I'll I, tell you, Dafaluma is bigger. Five, very, very tall for middleweight. And normally he has the advantages. But unfortunately today, Lucas does, because Lucas is taller. And here's, a, here's a opponent fighting out of the red corner. Coming from Namibia, Lucas the Demolisher, Nafaluma. Okay, here comes the Demolisher, Lucas and Nafaluma. Now, he, he, he caused a massive upset in Manchester, England last November when he beat a very, very touted home favorite 
called Craig Cunningham. It opened everyone's eyes, including my own. And I'm expecting really, really, really good things from this guy. Absolutely. He's shown that he's, he's able to, to box. He's not necessarily a slugger. He's a very tactical and technical fighter. So expect this to be a very interesting bout. As we said, Itaba, we don't know much about him, relatively unknown. So we, the unknown factor could be bad, could be good, could even be ugly. I always feel like it helps when a boxer looks mean. And Enda Faluma looks mean. It looks like he hasn't come to play around. Very, very tough. Well, well these are combat sports, so you've got to look like, you've got to look the part. Absolutely. Massive for the midway division. 32 now, so he's got to get a move on. The one defeat, which was many years ago, and, and he wants to get moving. He needs to win this and really start to make a move for it to see if he can do anything in the midway division. Yeah, he's got. He's, he, he certainly kicked on from the Cunningham fight because he then went on to fight in Namibia and won that fight as well. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing our boxers fighting out of the blue corner with a record of seven fights, four wins, one loss and two draws. All the way from Tanzania, Hussein Itaba. And the champion with the record of 14 fights, 12 wins, a solitary loss and one draw. Lucas, the demolisher, Dafalumo. The ref for this bout is Patrick Mukondiwa, judges Ngapai Ben, Edward Marshall, and Pomuza Znakile. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the national anthems of Tanzania and Namibia.
Absatz. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. This is the one. I've actually been waiting for this one. Obviously, they've got the main event, no doubt. But I think it's fantastic that we get a chance to see Lucas and Dafaluma. Let's let's see what the referee has to say here. You should always listen to my commands. If I say stop, you stop. If I say break, you break. You should always protect yourselves all the time. So go back to your corners and come back fighting. Right. Again, very difficult to hear what the referee said. So I shall translate. Guys, have a good fight. You heard uh, the instructions in the dressing room. Nothing dirty, nothing naughty. Let's go. And let's go in this one. And let's go indeed because this one Box. is very exciting for the middleweight category, especially with Lucas Dafoluma, who, as you say, is a prospect at 32. It's, it's, it's difficult for us to say he's a prospect at 32, but to be honest, this is a fighter who can box him. There, there's an example. You know, the, the time is unknown. The worst thing for a Luma right now in his career is fighting an unknown fighter who you don't know what he's got, you don't know how strong he's got. You must, there's nothing about him, there's no YouTube clips, there's nothing. That, that's a difficult prospect for a Luma. Certainly, he doesn't know what's coming. And so everything is a surprise. I reckon that this first round he's going to feel him out, see what he's got, feel his punches, see how, how hard he can hit. But at the same time, try to counter that and do some damage. Yesterday at the weigh-in, both of these fighters weighed 160 pounds. And Dafaluma easily looks like a light heavyweight now, but like 175. He's, he's, he's massive. I don't know how he makes 160, but he's definitely... He's, he's almost cheating to make 160. Yeah. <laughs> These guys he are is not a big the man. same size in the ring right now. He's a big man. And also utilizing his reach to good effect as well. I, I've said it. That, that jab is fantastic. And, you know, a lot of boxers use the jab as a range finder. He uses the jab to cause damage. <laughs> To hurt his opponent. It does, he causes to hurt his opponent. It's a fantastic jab. And he's not even really throwing the right hand jab. His jab right hand is fantastic. Tr tries to go to the body there, wants to mix it up, which is good. And right now, it's hard almost, it's almost just kind of easing his way into this one. He but is. But in guys, terms of yes. ring control, I would say that Davaluma seems to be controlling the ring a lot more. It's his game plan that they're operating on at the moment. And Taba needs to take control of this fight because the longer it goes on and it's Dafuluma's game plan that's going, the fight was only going on one way. Yeah, um, you can clearly see who's the more experienced. Um, and Dafuluma obviously has fought, has fought away from home many a times. Um, he's obviously from Namibia. He, he has fought a few times in Namibia, but he's always been on the road. And this won't phase him. The atmosphere won't phase him. The crowd won't phase him. And you wonder if it will fade. Or sorry, phase the Tarbra as the fight goes on. There was a slight nod there from Dafuluma. I think he enjoys and likes what's about how this fight is going. The fight on the back foot as well from the Tarbra. Sorry, from Dafuluma. Got caught there, got to be careful. Doesn't want to get too overconfident and too cocky here. Kind of got caught going backwards there. And look, every one of these guys can punch it. Doesn't want to be caught by the big one. Hussein Ntaba from Tanzania. Hussein Ntaba himself, he's not doing himself any a disservice in this fight. He's certainly come to box. No, no, absolutely. And as we said, the technical and ta tactical Stop. aspects of this fight are intriguing. No, I agree. Oh, and Nathalie Luba gave the death stare, man. Almost like, why are you in the ring with me? I'm about to, but I gave him the death stare, which was quite scary. You're a mere mortal. I was scared. I'm not in the ring. No, but, no, but look. For me, I think it's Albert. It's Albert's boxing smart as well. He's not getting involved. High guard. But there's an aspect there where when Dafuluma throws a punch and it lands at the body, he's dropping his guard. So there's an opening that's been created there. And once that opening is created, the longer we go into this fight, we continue to say it, fatigue co causes openings. Yes. And Dafuluma is, is well capable of taking advantage of that. Itaba needs his guard to be a lot higher. No, no, absolutely. I mean, he's gone 10 rounds before. He's gone 12 rounds before. 
he definitely has a guess saying to go all 12 if he needs to. I don't think he will go 12, but if he needs to, um, he will. I interviewed him earlier on today, and I said to him, what do you think about this fight? Is it going to be easy? He said, easy fight, easy pay, and then I'm on to the next. We wow. shall see. Well, you need to see confidence, see and hear confidence from fighters. And in truth, he's been up to the billing from what we've seen so far. Those body shots are going to cause some damage. And they are very vicious body shots. And, and with body shots, you're almost storing up power there. They might not hurt you now, they'll catch up to you later. They certainly will. almost chopping down a tree. And right now, he's chopping down that tree. He is. And I know to borrow one of the biggest exponents of the body shot, Floyd Mayweather, he could weigh you down big time. It's a very good point you make about Floyd, because everyone looks at Floyd and thought, the punches are not powerful. Ask the fighters that have been in the ring with him. Those body shots are powerful. They will hurt you. They will hurt you. And the Luma has almost got the eyes of someone that's trying to stalk right now. He's almost stalking him. It's hard for down. Are you saying he almost needs to kind of land something to, to keep to keep Luma honest? A little more than halfway through this uh, round. And for me, Dafaluma shading this one as well. I would have given the first one to him as well. So it's going well. He's in one hole. One hole. told me he Great wants guys. to make a statement. Um, he's got to be careful though that he doesn't try and make an overstatement. One thing he doesn't want to do is get caught and get and get sloppy here. It's about winning the fight. That's the most important thing. Win the fight. And then I'm sure he'll go on to big things. But it, again, he's got to be careful. He's fighting the great. unknown here in Ottawa. All the great boxers, all the great sports people will tell you that first you've got to do the basics right. And then everything will pay for itself after that. That's great. That's a great. Last 50 seconds of this round number two. Again, good body work from Dafalum. And what he's when doing, he's the when he lands those body he's shots, he's making Ataba kind of put his hands down. And then he's trying to go up top very quickly. So, again, very good tactics from Dafalum. The one area I think he could improve, and, and, and as I say, at 32, he's going to get his needs to get his skates on. So I think he could be a little bit faster, yeah. especially taking advantage of when that guard is down. If he were a little bit faster, I think he would have made a, a, done a lot more damage to his opponent. Than this no, you're right. And I mean, when, when you're push. talking about him push. wanting to go up another level, maybe face someone in the top 30, those are the things the top guys will capitalize on. Certainly. Now look at his speed and think, okay, we can do that. We might have been able to get him for strength and stamina, but he is Stop. slow. And they'll look to take advantage of that. Certainly, but he's facing Hussein Itaba now. And Hussein Itaba, he can take. Here's some action from round number three. So far, good fight. Crowd again. There's more women in here than men. Than men. Is that what Zimbabwe is about? There's more women watching the boxing than men. Fantastic. Do you want to move to Zimbabwe, Ade? I, you know, I'm already applying for a, a work permit. <laughs> I, I might have to tell them to hurry up. <laughs> Remember, this is a fight for the WBF Intercontinental Middleweight Title. Lucas and Dafaluma oh, in. Hey, what what hey. color would you call Lucas' what? shorts? Let me get this right. Green and cream? Oh my goodness, I think we need to get one of those ladies here and then they can tell us exactly what the, the color is. But I would go with green and cream. And Itabi from Tanzania in the black and white. It seemed to kind of get a bit heated there and both of them have kind of stepped back and got into their boxing. It did, it did. And always good to see a bit of brawling here and there. Just shows that they're both interested, they're both keen. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, and that's what the crowd likes as well. Look, for me personally, I'm, I'm a technical kind of guy. I like to see you kind of set your punches up, but there's nothing wrong with a phone booth fight. <laughs> Everyone likes a phone booth fight. And I think if this goes a few more rounds, we might get the. Absolutely. 
Nafaluma looking for that opening. And he's trying to use that jab to good effect. Keep him going. It's jab, jab, body shot. But it, it, the finishing move for me, for Nafaluma, has got to be then to do some damage to the head. He's then not finishing with the move because he jabs, jabs, body shot, the guard comes down and is unable to then take advantage. No, absolutely. Um, you know, I, I wonder, he landed good shots in round number one or two. Again, I don't I don't want to say he underestimated Ottawa. He landed good shots and Ottawa is still there. And that might, he, he, he starts to get a bit dispirited when you've landed your big blows and the guy's still there coming forward. And he's still lucid, he's still looking, staring you in the eye. He, you haven't done any damage in essence where you thought that this would be a money shot. Absolutely. Lucas is normally used to facing guys maybe two or three inches shorter. Not as big as him, not as tall as him. So I wonder if that's almost a new territory for him as well. And here, Hussein Itaba is only giving him a centimeter. So these men are, are virtually the same height. You talked about the way in, virtually the same weight. This is an intriguing battle. Itaba is making enough Luma think of it here. Stop, stop. Stop Luma, I thought, came out in the first minute of the first round, almost thinking this was okay. okay. And I think oh, he now realizes so that this is a fight. Box. And he's going to have to dig deep to get the win here. That's more like it from Buffalo. That's more like it. And it's set up with the body, like you said, and then landed the overhand right. And that's something that he's not done at the time. He landed it there. And it was a combination. He used it to good effect. He does a bit more of that. He certainly could get the W here. Just oh, like that. that's more like it. That's why I think this guy could be the best middleweight in Africa. Those type of combinations is what got me excited, but we need to see more of it in this fight. Those are the combinations that are going to do damage, and you can see it now. It's it's holding on. Yeah. Doesn't want this now anymore. Felt those body shots. Again, they will suck the air out of you. I don't care if Itaba has a 20 pack. Those body shots will start to pay effect. Because what they do is that they have the effect of compressing the chest cavity. You can't get enough oxygen in there. And as we see here, we'll see the combinations coming momentarily from the Fuluma. There it is, the combinations coming through. And to good effect, those body shots compressing the chest cavity. You can't get the oxygen in and they suck the life out of you, literally. No, no, absolutely. Better from the Fuluma in the last minute there. He needs to continue that. Because he doesn't want to go to points. He wants to create a statement. He wants to get a knockout or a referee stopping. So we're going to have to see him. Maybe we've got up another 10% here. Yeah, if he steps it up, he's got a very good chance in this fight. All the fans, Dorothy Zimuto of Quese Sports, also here tonight, Quese TV. She loves her boxing. She really does. She loves her boxing. Always here at the boxing. Always enjoys her boxing. She's always here, always keen, and always backing the fighters. And a very big promoter of female boxing as well. Most definitely, we had two female fights on our card, our undercard today, and they were phenomenal fights. Not quite sure what's going on for Tarba here. He doesn't look like he wants to. I think he's having a word with the corner man. I think this might be it. This, this might well be it. The call of the doctor in. Um, doctor's having a look at his shoulder. Doctor's looking at his shoulder. Trying to, trying to hear what the doctor's saying. Very difficult to hear what the doctor's saying, but... Oh, it looks like he pulled a the muscle there. Spraying uh, some, some cold spray on it. This isn't like tennis. You can't have a doctor stoppage like this. If the fight is off or it's on. Can I stop yeah, I think the referee's going to make a call here. It's definitely a muscle, muscle, muscle spray. Yeah. And he looks like he's in trouble. He looks like he's in pain. No, he can't. I think that's, I think that's the end of that. Yeah, the ref scored it. And that's the I would have loved to have got the knockout for real. But on his record, it will say knockout. It will say TKO. It will say happy with that. It will say technical knockout. And he'll be happy with it. And also, he got his opponent into that position. Because those body shots... Him straining his muscles got him into the position whereby he strained his shoulder muscle. It's very unfortunate for Hussein Itaba, who we saw as a very technical fighter. But the win goes to Lucas Nafuluma.
It does go to Lucas and Nafaluma. He does get the win. He does retain his titles. And again, he wants to go on for big things. And this is exactly the kind of performance he needed to kind of say, okay, maybe I'm above this level. It's time to move me. Yeah, the step up certainly for Lucas and Nafaluma. And in truth, I, I, had seen him, I had seen him box here and there, and I, I didn't watch the Cunningham fight, which you watched. And when you touted him as possibly the best middleweight on the continent, I thought to myself, perhaps, but let's have a look. And in truth, I can see what you see in him. He's a very good fighter. Absolutely. Absolutely. And there, there are things he needs to work on. Can he work on them at 32? I, I don't know if you can learn new things. As the phrase says, an old dog never learns new tricks. But, but we'll see. We'll see if he can learn those things. But good performance, good win. And, and now he moves on to hopefully bigger and better things. Certainly. And uh, a win can never go down the wrong way. He'll be loving this and enjoying it. All right. Let's go to our MC, Hugo Rebatica, with the official decision. Well, I think it's ready for us this time. Hugo Rabitica with the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after Hussein failed to come out in round four, the winner and still the intercontinental middleweight champion, Lucas Nafaluma. And to hand over that belt will be Zimbabwe's very own Charles Manucci. title and you did firstly congratulations on the performance obviously I know you don't want the fight to end like that but it's still a win it's still a technical knockout how do you feel about the performance yeah first of all I want to thank God my Lord Jesus Christ who give me strength and the opportunity and uh, I just did what I have to do and uh, I, I check the guy I'll take my time attack the body more because I know the body is not gonna last so the, we did what we did have to do Another good performance from you. I've seen you, obviously, in a few good performances. What do you want next? Right now, I, I just prove that um, I'm a real deal. I'm a force to reckon with. I want to fight on the big stage in the world. I want to prove myself I can fight any man in the world. I can beat any man in the world. This is my time. It's my season now. So I'm, re I'm ready to go. All right, let me have a quick word of your promoter, Sol. Another good performance from Lucas. What can we expect next from him? You know, Lucas, he's, uh, he had a, that great win last year against Cunningham and they had a few months of inactivity. He's had a re rebound fight in Namibia on the third of this month. This was another good fight. Uh, he needs to fight in October and then February the 9th next year, we need to take him out there to the UK uh, and look again and take on that silver title, WBC Silver. So there's three or four English guys there whose names are on there and I think Mark Heftron's the one he's looking for. Mark's 19 in the WBC rankings, Lucas is 33. I think Lucas has proven last year by beating Craig that he's the title holder. Let's see if Mark's got the, what it takes to stand up to him. I think the Zimbabwean crowd liked him. Will he get to come back to Harare, Zimbabwe and fight? Listen, maybe he gets October and November. If they like him enough and they sell us enough, we'll bring him back. Zimbabwean crowd, do you like Lucas? I love you, I love you guys. I want to thank all the fans that you came out in numbers. Thank you very much. Keep for supporting boxing. Thank you. Good performance, Lucas. Well done. But at the same time, try to counter. That. 
Fantastic showing by Lucas Ndafuluma. Lucas Ndafuluma, one of the exciting prospects in the middleweight category and showing exactly why. We talked about the fact that his combinations were going to do harm to Hussein Itaba and they certainly did that. It's the body blows that got him down. And ultimately, it was a muscle injury that decided this fight hardly the way that he would have wanted it. But as Ade said when he was in the ring, it's still a win for him. Happy to take the win. And he walks away with a good record out of Zimbabwe. Yeah, loads more big fights to come. Obviously, title action as well to come. Sting on a render against Tony Salam. Don't go anywhere. There he is. There's the Sting. A big fight for him upcoming against Tony Salam, the WBF African Cruiserweight Champion. Will he defend that title in front of his home people? We'll soon find out. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. I don't want you to worry because we're going to have ourselves a whole barrel of fun. <laughs> Download the Quested TV app. Wait for the app to automatically install. Open the Quested TV app and register with your account number so that we can verify your subscription. Find what you want and press play. I like that. I was excited as a part of sisters. As serious fans, you know your sports. Terrible job by Mark Easley. You want the whole story. There are no rules that say you have to give a certain number. And an in-depth analysis of the game. Some of his behavior on the field, it left a lot to be desired. He's trying to find ways of how he can get a result. Join me every Tuesday on Seriously Sport. So cool to see that split strategy though. The best of the best go head to head. On the biggest night of the summer, the stars of the league, they're all here for an unforgettable show. Take a try. Welcome back, everyone, to Quesse Friday Fight Night. The atmosphere here, you can cut with a knife. It's fantastic. People are tense. There's a bit of tension. Everyone's excited for Sting on Arenda. That fight's coming up. But so far, it's been a fantastic evening, hasn't it? It's been a fantastic evening. And in truth, Kwese and uh, Color Coda Promotions can throw a mean party because it's all a party here. All building up to that big fight. Cruiserweight title on the cards. The Africa Cruiserweight title. Well, going to be a big one. What a great venue, though. Let's talk about this International Conference Center. What a fantastic venue. Fantastic venue. And the thing is, it's been transformed into a bona fide boxing venue. 
and that's that, that that's that's kudos to Chris. All right, let's have a look at the tail of the tape for our next bout this evening. Another title fight. Again, one that I think will be an exciting one. Peter Bambini for a record of 10 3 and 3 against Philip Musariri from a record of 2 1 and 1. And I think they've just seen the tail of the tape behind us. And I think it's fair to say Peter Bambini's got some fans here. At the weigh in, obviously, these two fighters know each other well, both Zimbabwe fighters, and know that there's a title on the line, so they're both very focused about this. Yeah, I mean, look, it, it's all about winning titles here. And if they can win a title, if they can go on then to their next level, winning a belt is such a good thing. And I think it's a fantastic opportunity for them. Absolutely. I mean, we've had a fantastic... And, and you know, the commentary team isn't too shabby either, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, we're, 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 we, we, we look quite good, though, we're on camera today. It's a beard gang. It's a beard gang, I did. That's a fantastic fight. Let's see how this one plays out. Let's go back to our MC, Hugo Rabitica, to introduce both fighters for us. Ladies and gentlemen, the penultimate fight of tonight is for the vacant Zimbabwe super lightweight title bout over 12 rounds. Introducing both fighters from Zimbabwe, in the blue corner, from Harare, Philip Mad Cobra Musariri. Wow, what a reception for Philip Musariri. Well, when you oh, well, he wants me, I want to get up and dance. When your nickname is Mad Cobra, you're going to espouse some emotion, and he certainly has, the crowd loves it. They're singing the along. The They're singing along that. to Thomas Mafumo, another legend of Zimbabwean music, playing on the speakers, and that, I think, also endears it to the crowd. Masariri is loving this. 29 years old, record of 2-1-1. One, one. What an opportunity this is for him to get a title. This will be phenomenal. And his opponent fighting in the red corner, also hailing from the Sunshine City, Peter the Sniper Bambini. Bambini. These guys actually fought in July last year and it was a draw. They're that evenly matched. I think we're going to go all the way again here. Yeah, this one might go the distance because these are two fighters evenly matched. But the one thing I will say for Philip Musariri is that he's an explosive, quick fighter, very nimble on his feet. So I think Peter Bambini is going to have to do the the antagonistic behavior here and chase this fighter. If he chases and finds him, this could be a very interesting fight. Absolutely. But a lot of experience with Bambini. Obviously, he had more of the fights. He's come up from a very low weight class. He started off as a flyweight. He's now fighting a super lightweight. It's quite a big jump in weight. We'll see if his power can carry up. record there, 10, 3 and 3. Definitely the more experience. Can he translate that to a win this evening? Ladies and gentlemen, introducing our boxers. Fighting out of the blue corner with a record of three fights, two wins and one loss. From Harare, Zimbabwe, Philip Cobra. Musariri! And his opponent fighting out of the red corner. Hailing also from Harare with a record of 15 fights, 11 wins, 3 losses, and a single draw. Peter the Sniper Bambini!
Ladies and gentlemen, the ref is uh, Jokonya Kingston, judges Diana Makumbe, Elzon Logo, and Francis Nendere. Ladies and gentlemen, if you will please be upstanding for the national anthem of Zimbabwe. <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Right. Boxers, obey my commands at all times. Protect yourselves at all times. Now, shake hands. Uh, go back to your corners and wait for the bell. Okay, um, we roll the dice again on this one. These guys had a fight, like I said, in July. It was a draw. Um, we're going to see if we can separate them this evening. Tiger, what, Tiger what, on the line. The, it's almost like the crowd are going against each other. It's almost like a football match. It's like a football match, and it's almost as if there's a home fans and the away fans. Yeah. The away fans are smaller. A little copy of the away fans there. But they're making themselves heard. And again, fantastic. They certainly are. It's a great atmosphere because to have two Zimbabwe boxers going for the Zimbabwe super lightweight title over 12 rounds. What more would you want? All right, just waiting for the referee here and the timekeeper to get into position. And then we're ready to go for this one. Maybe they fight for the vacant Zimbabwe and super lightweight belt over 12 rounds. And we've done this before. Do we really want to do this again? But they do, and this time it's for a title. So there's that added extra little carrot there. So and you get a title, and then that takes you to other places. And that's what they're trying to do here. Go to other places. You certainly are. And what you what you what you can tell is that there's no love lost between these two fighters because there was no touching of the gloves, straight into it. So there seems to be a bit of professional animosity, we'll call it. I like that, professional animosity. Peter Bambini in the black and white. Philippa Suriri in the red with white strip.
before. We've been here before, and it was in the recent past, wasn't it? Very, very recent past. There's clearly something in the Zimbabwean water that makes them want to have a brawl. We build brawlers here. <laughs> and you certainly do build good fighters as well. Again. That's the one there. Let, let's see if we can see that again. I'm not... oh, unfortunately, we won't see that again. Uh, again, uh, it wasn't a knockdown. Definitely a little trip. But credit to him, just got up and kept on, kept on boxing. And that's the way to go. Because anything that happens in the ring can possibly dent your confidence get into your head and you don't want those to go negative because what they do is they damage your game plan remember we still have title action to come and it is big title action still gonna end up the current wbf africa cruiserweight champion will take on the guy that's been antagonizing from sorry antagonizing him for at least a month now tony salam that's to come up after this one Musariri has really, really come to life in this battle. I, I understand now why they call him Mad Cobra. Because he's, as, as we said earlier before the, the fight started, he's very explosive, very quick, and now he's demonstrating it. But Benny coming back into it, though. Yeah, what Musariri's doing, though, is he's stalking, but he's almost just following Bambini around the ring. He needs to cut the ring off. So almost Bambini doesn't have a way to escape. This is a very, very tight round. They are slugging it. Blow for blow. Punch for punch. Looks like Bambini's concentrating on scoring. And Musari wants to do some damage. No, no, absolutely. Yeah, I, I think Bambini probably knows he doesn't have the power to stop Musariri. So he wants to box and just win every round. Whereas Musariri wants to, wants to knock him out. It's that simple. He wants to knock him out clean. Very subtly put, Ade. <laughs> Very subtly put. I mean, again, as a judge, what do you like here? Do you like the boxing, the kind of the back foot boxing of Pambini? Or, or do you like the aggressiveness of Musariri? Very, very difficult. I must say, I find, I find the aggression 
the speed, the, uh, the intensity of the Mad Cobra. Very appealing. Yeah. I Who do you like? Um, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a boxing man. I'm a boxing man. <laughs> you clearly are the brawler here. <laughs> of the two of us, you're the phone booth. And I'm man. the Zimbabwean. Yeah, imagine, I'm the Nigerian. But I, I like the boxing ability here. And um, I, I feel like, oh, good there pass from go. the Sariri. Yes, please, I'll have more than that. said to Bambini, forget jabs, Ben is going to fight. And but Bambini has to make sure he sticks to his tactics. Bambini, as you quite rightly pointed out, has come out. He said to himself, I'm going to try and go the distance with this guy. I'm going to score as much as I can, win every round, and see what happens in the end. Musarini wants to knock him out. Now, the negative there is that Musarini is wearing himself out. As you can see here, he's using a lot of energy following Pambeni around the, around the ring. Blow for blow, foul, punch for punch. Pambeni is scoring the punches. What, what do you say to the corner of Musari? If you're Musari's trainer right now, what advice do you give him? I tell him patience. Patience is a virtue, and that's what's going to deliver the fight for him. Right now, he's getting a little bit impatient. He thinks to himself, I can take this guy, but you've got to wait for the opening. You probably can, but you need to wait for the opening. Box! Jump! One, Jump. one massive difference between this and their first fight in July. First fight in July was a Box. six rounder. This is a 12 rounder. <laughs> so I hope someone's told Busariri that this is six more rounds than you're used to going. <laughs> Then last time. Great boxing on the back foot from Bambini. Honestly, great back foot boxing. Absolutely. Because what he's doing is that, and, and it may not look like much when you look at it with an uneducated eye, but Bambini, Bambini on the back foot is actually scoring punches. Yeah. No, no, he is. And I hope the judges can see this. Because a lot of Musariri's work isn't actually catching Bambini. Yeah. He's got his hand up, he's, he's parrying a lot of the punches. But again, the judges might like the idea of the Musariri walking down Bambini. And he is walking him down. And, but Ali, you can be you can be busy about being busy, which is Musariri. Yeah. And you can be effective. And Bambini, I believe, is being quite effective. Uh, absolutely. Fantastically well said there. It's about effectiveness rather than just being busy for the sake of being busy. And Bambini's definitely being a lot more effective. But again, what do the judges like? What do the judges see? I hope they're wearing glasses. Because <laughs> they should see Bambini really landing the cleaner punches here. At least the judges aren't watching this broadcast, or you and I would be out in our ear. It's funny because I said the judges should be wearing glasses. The judge next to us has his glasses on. <laughs> he has the glasses on his head. Oh, good shot from Mr. Riri there. I think that hurt Bambini. Bambini's in the corner. Gloves are up, but I think that shot might have hurt him. Got to be careful. That's not where he wants to be. You don't want to be in the corner taking these punches from clearly the bigger guy. Bambini, though, is a strong boy. He's taking a lot of beating, but now he's counter-attacking and with some effect. Bambini is in the wrong, he's in the wrong weight class. He needs to go down a weight where his power is more effective, I think. For sure. Because every time he's landing, it doesn't seem to have any effect on Musariri. And it looks like Musariri has seen that because even when he's attacking Bambini, he doesn't care what shots are landing on him because they're not hurting him. So what he wants to do is inflict hurt and make sure this doesn't go the distance. No, no, you're so right. He's now walking through Pambini's punches. He really is. I mean, don't get me wrong, look, this is fantastic work for Pambini. But can he do this for 12 rounds? I, I'm not sure. Every time 
they stand and trade. It's Pambini who takes the back Stop. of the set and says, no, I don't want this. And it's turning very quickly when they, they stand up to one another into a slugfest. It's punch for punch, but who's doing the damage? You see, that's exactly what we're talking about on the replay now, where when they're trading blows, it looks like Benveni who's getting the who's been who's getting taking the damage. No, absolutely. It's very, very difficult, but Pambini needs to stay in the middle of the ring. He can't keep retreating to the ropes. Every time he goes to the ropes, he's getting outboxed, outpunched, outfought, and eventually outbeat. He's got to stay in the middle of the ring. And for, for, a, for a fighter with as much experience as Pambini has, we're quite surprised with how he hasn't been able to implement that because it's one of the basics, and you've got to be able to do the basics right. Here we go, round number four of this potentially 12-round fight for the vacant Zimbabwean super lightweight title. Peter Pambini in the white with black trim from Zimbabwe versus Philip Masaruri in the red and white and black also from Zimbabwe. Sariri is landing some telling blows now, I think. And he's got under the skin of Pambeni because Pambeni is now trying to look for that big punch, as we saw with that uppercut. You know, I, I almost feel like Pambeni does need to land one big one to almost stop Masaruri from coming forward. Masaruri is walking through these punches because Pambini hasn't really landed one clean yet. He might need to land a big one just to stop this this force, which is Masariri. Keep coming, it's like a hurricane. Hurricane or tornado? <laughs> tornado? Let, let's go hurricane. Hurricane? It's like hurricane. a hurricane. Well, it's a mad cobra, that's for sure. <laughs> and I'm a little concerned with now just looking at the condition of the fighters. Pambini's eyes look like they've dropped a little bit. And I think that Masari has done a bit of damage to him now. Yeah, I, I don't know. He not as lucid as he was yeah. earlier. Yeah, I, I think there is damage on the left eye. I, I don't know if that's more a head clash. No, I think, they're, I think they're okay. Heads are coming very close as well, though. They are. They are. There's a lot of damage that Peter Pambini has taken. He's going to have to Referee's stop this. Referee's got to warn him. He's got Pambini's putting his head in now as well. He's trying to make this a bit dirty. He, he might need to make it dirty to win this. But again, I said it earlier. Can he do his style of boxing for 12 rounds? We're only in round four now, and I feel like he's more fighting Musariri's fight. He is. And that's not what he wanted to do. And Musariri has came out from the start as the aggressor. And now Pambini's trying to aggress back and you can see it now but many his knees his legs seem to be fading he needs this bell yeah he does I, I think not only does he need it for the rest I think he needs it to have a word of his corner I think whatever tactic they they had is obviously not working now they need to think of plan B maybe even plan C yeah it always pays to have various strategies and We'll know in a minute whether Peter Pambeni has another strategy because Masari has been coming forward Stop. and forward only. <laughs> I would say that round went to Masari. Yeah, I, I think it did. And you look at look at Pambini slumped in the corner. I mean, like, both of them are slumped actually. <laughs> The crowd is 
having a fantastic time as we build up to that big fight. Sting corner in the Zimbabwe takes on Tony Salam of Nigeria. How strange, we have a Nigerian commentator and a Zimbabwean commentator. And our main event is Nigeria versus Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe. We'll try not to be oh. too impartial. This may not go well. <laughs> round fight very tough round to very tough fight to score sorry oh great uppercut from pampini fantastic fantastic and that was a counter attack because um Mussolini's corner caught for the triple jab now what the jab does is that if your guard on your on your left hand isn't high up it can open you up to exactly what took place there where peter pampini then got the right hook in oh good little counter left from pampini as well he's tried the uppercut two or three times after we got success there, and and Musariri is clearly wise to it now. But it's good. It, 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 it's clear that he's trying to mix things up. Yeah. And I think that's clearly advice from the corner. Try the uppercut. Try the hooks, and those things are working. Tried it again there, with Pambini. Well, you talked about the fact that get, the bell was going to help him rest, and also get a word in his ear from a, from the corner. For me, the way it looks now, the corner that's done well is Peter Pambini's. He's switching orthodox to southpaw, orthodox to southpaw. Personally, I always feel that confuses them rather than confuses the opponent. But again, it does show that he's thinking and he's trying things. For sure. But from a technical perspective, your stance is quite important and maintaining a stance gives you that stability, that ability to then pick your game plan from there. If you keep switching, it just confuses you. Yeah, especially if you're, look, in the history of boxing, there's been some fantastic switch hitters. Roy Jones will switch hit up. A guy called Junior Witter in the UK. But that was their style. They didn't just do it when they were struggling. Oh, Pambini got pulled. That was a fantastic oh. shot. Was it really then? Three or four here. Again, he needs to get out of that corner. He's looking to stop him now. Pabini's hurt. Pabini's Pabini's hurt. definitely hurt. Just above oh, us in commentary, holding on to the ropes. Those punches hurt, and he's got 40 seconds to get out of this round. Big, deep breath from Bambini. What his he needs, head is shaking. He needs to hold right now. He doesn't need to throw punches. He needs to hold. Musariri. I don't know what caused it. I don't know if that was an elbow or a headbutt, but it's a nasty cut, I think. We'll, we'll, we'll see if we can have a look at the cut a lot more closely on the corner of Musariri, but again, that was, I think it could have been a head clash. I think it was a head clash more than anything because. Certainly, Musari was the aggressor. So it's surprising that he gets the cut. We'll try and see if we can get it on any of these replays. But at no point do we see the, the cash on any of these re replays. Not sure where that cut happened. tried their best to kind of stop the flow of blood obviously where the cut is the blood can get into his eye but I, I, I'm not sure they've done a very good job in that corner with the cut the ref is a little bit concerned about that I think the ref is going to the judges and saying that cut was 
caused by a headbutt. Yeah, looks like it's it caused by a headbutt. headbutt. Which means, basically, if the fight was stopped in this round, because of the headbutt, they will go to the judges' scorecard, and it won't be a technical knockout for Bambini. For well, Bambini, yes. Smart, he would do the very naughty thing of trying to rub heads now. Yeah, that's what you need. You want to open that cut again, yeah, just... you want the blood to go into the eye, and that's what the naughty guys would do. Is he naughty? I don't know. If so, I was a boxer, so I would do it. No, it's exactly. I was, I was gonna say that's what Ade would do in a situation like this. Wait, wait, wait. you're the brawler, I'm the boxer. Man. <laughs> you're the naughty boxer. <laughs> Looks like he's had some success because it looks like the gash is opening up again. Mussolini slips in the referee there. I don't know. Oh, big right, big left hand, sorry, for Bambini. I don't know how Mussolini took that, but it was a huge left hand. That, that was massive. And like we said, it's very dangerous when you're the aggressor because you leave yourself open and the counter punch can hurt you, and that's exactly what took place there. The referee has stopped the fight here. He wants. The doctor isn't supposed to get in the ring. He's supposed to look at the cut from the outside of the ring. But they're going to have a look at this cut. And Musariri doesn't want to lose this based on a cut. Well, definitely the doctor. I don't know what, I don't know what they're saying here. Looks like the doctor wants to have a deeper look. Again, just to confirm the ruling, and I do believe it is the ruling for the Zimbabwe in boxing that if this does go to the cards, it will be. It'll go, sorry, it will go to the cards, it won't be a technical knockout. He's trying to put a blast on it, you can't do that. in a fight. You could not do that, referee. That, you could not put a plaster on a cut. I've, 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 never, I've never ever seen that in my life. The cut is supposed to be the advantage for a fighter. You can't then put a plaster Stop. over it. I've never seen that. It's almost like he's getting running repairs. The referee is the now and the by Vaseline again. He's not supposed to be doing this. No, he's not. He's not supposed to be doing this at all. Very, very strange ruling from the referee. Very strange ruling, and it's surprising that the referee is actually condoning and assisting in this. I've never seen this. Box. Okay. Um, not sure what to say there, but that's not allowed. Well, certainly what we're seeing now is a lot more, a lot better ring control for Peter Pambeni. Yeah. Possibly because Misariri is hurt. Yeah, I, I think it could have demoralized him a little bit. Oh, another big left hook from Bambini. I don't think that landed full on. And he goes to the right now. Landed the cleaner shots to Bambini. The time should have stopped here. There was only six seconds to go on the clock when I looked and it's still going on. This is, this is now officially a four minute round.
but Ben is definitely in the ascendancy now. Here we go. Pambeni now landing the telling blows. And as we can see, Pambeni now controlling the ring a lot better and making sure that Musariri, Musariri's strategy, who was, he was controlling the strategy before in the fight, but now Pambeni, since the injury to, uh, to Musariri, has now begun to, begun to enforce his game plan on this fight and his game plan is to attack 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 Pambeni should just pedal to the metal, get this over with. And that's exactly what he's doing. Absolutely. Again, yeah. if he had more power, yeah. I think this fight could have been over by now. I really believe so. Situation. I don't think he's got enough power to stop him because he's landed some telling blows, which, in your words, Musari has just walked through. So I think 
they finish the round and then they're going to consolidate the the points so it won't be a technical knockout to to Bambini. I assume. Barry, your guess is as good as mine. I mean, look, it's not a bad thing we get another round of this great fight, but I am pretty sure the doctor said that was it. I'm pretty sure I saw the referee say that was it. I was positive about And I'm about pretty that. sure I saw Bambini's hands go in the end. Well, the one thing we've seen is that the referee collected a scorecard. Fight's carrying on. Again, judge, the referee takes him to the neutral corner yeah. and tells him to box. I mean, if you're Bambini, you, you, you thought you won this fight last round. But he knows that he's very close to getting a stoppage now. I think yeah. one more push for Bambini and the referee will call this a hole. And uh, the instruction from Sariri's corner was telling because they talked about the fact, don't box, fight. So he wants to turn this into a street fight now. He might need to. He might need to. If you're Pambini, you've just got to continue your boxing. He's boxed well. He's only had maybe a couple of rounds hiccups. And but he's landing the big guy the stronger punches as well now. Yeah, don't let him take you into the telephone booth. You don't want the phone booth. No. There was almost a bemused look from Pambini. Almost thinking to himself, what do I have to do to put this guy down? I'm yeah. landing the punches, doing everything I need to. No, no, it's even worse now. I'm landing the punches, the doctor calls it off, the referee calls it off, and you're still here. <laughs> Why I mean, are you still here? Do I need a cheat code to get rid of you? Like, this is almost turned into a nightmare for him. But again, the cuts opened up again. And I think a few more punches than that, so look, it's a, it's a bad cut now. They, they're going to need to, referees going to need to look at this cut. It's a bad one. They really have a bad Again, I mean, what it does is the blood will go into your eye. It will blind that side of the eye. You won't be able to see the punches coming. And the referee is looking at it. I can see the referee trying to get an angle to look at the cut. This is stunning. definitely turned this into a brawl yes absolutely all he wants to do is keep going until the 12 oh no that cuts bad and hope for the best that cuts, that cuts very bad i'm sure i'm shocked that the referee is still letting this go on the referee the cut is very bad uh, cut. Box. the box on the referee's instructions aren't clear to the fighters they don't know what the referee's saying this is unsafe and it's I think the referee cut. needed it. It's a very bad, it's a very, very bad fight, uh, cut. If you're, if you're Musa Bibi's corner, do you, do you maybe look at the eye and think, enough's enough? But I think so, if, if you care for your fight. <laughs> It's not looking good at all. Let's have a look at some of the action from round number eight. Good work from Bambini. Very, very good work. Again, big right hand. He's found the hope for that right hand all night. Yes, and the thing is that Musariri, his speed is gone now. So it's look not at, just look a catch. at him in the corner. He's shattered. This is the guy that doesn't want to be there anymore. He, he definitely is a mad cobra. <laughs> he really is. Because he's mental to be carrying on. 
And then secondly, he's not boxing at all. Just bruising and brawling. The sights and sounds of the International Conference Center. Sights and sounds of Zimbabwe. Hey, Ade, isn't that your brother? Wait, I'm better, I'm better looking than him. Just, just. I don't, I don't want to jump the gun here, and, but I think the referee has called this off. Are you sure, Ade? You've said this to us before. While well, the lights are flashing, they take off the gloves. I think it's done. I think it's done. I think it's safe to say it has done. And I think it's safe to say the winner. Hugo's going into the ring, so that's a good sign. And now, just having a look at this fight, I think Musari came out, tried to use his strength. His strengths are speed and power. But then the cut happened, and everything, his entire game plan, went and came to naught. It was almost a fight of two halves as well. I thought Musari was definitely doing the better work in the first few rounds, and I mean, that cut changed everything. Absolutely. So Pambeni, I think, is going to walk this, and deservedly so. He did, he's boxed better, he had a better game plan, and was able to react to the various uh, uh, stimuli that came in during the fight. For instance, when the cut happened, he was able to attack as well enough to ensure that that cut stayed open and win the fight ultimately. Absolutely. Well done to both guys. Remember, we still have the big one coming up next. Singo Lorenda versus Tony Salam for the WBF African Cruiserweight belt. But well done to both guys, but particularly well done to Bambini for the win. All right, let's go to our MC, Hugo Rakabita, with the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, the judges have called this fight between Peter Pambeni and Philippe Musariri a technical draw. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I have no idea Wait. how they've done that. How is that even possible? Um, I'm not sure. It, it, it doesn't make sense. I, I'm confused. I would love to offer you an explanation at home, but I can't. That is definitely not the outcome that we expected. Because when we looked at the fight, on the balance of the boxing, it looked like Peter Bambini had done enough to win the fight. Um, strange decision, very, very strange decision, but let's not worry too much because we've got something special coming up next for you. Sting on a render, the WBF African Cruiserweight Champion versus Tony Salam. This is a good one. There's going to render on the pads. Will he defend his title? Will he shut the mouth of Tony Salam? The yes. once beaten Tony Salam. Based in Nigeria now, fought in the UK plenty of times. He says it's going to be easy work. We'll find out in a minute. Don't go anywhere. At World Remit, we started with a single goal, to create a better way to send money to Africa, a way that's faster and easier. To mobile, to bank accounts, to thousands of locations across Africa, anytime, anywhere. That's why millions of customers use our service. With World Remit, you can easily receive money from family and friends today. 
World Remit, a better way to receive money. Get ready, Botswana. Quesay just revolutionized home entertainment. Snap, snap, snap it. Get the latest movies and shows. It is an ideal which I hope to live for and to achieve. All the best live sport and something for all ages. Watch on up to four devices. Subscribe at these stores. Quesay, Beyond TV. The Inside Line. F1 News. Opinion. I don't think I've ever missed a teammate in my life. Because generally there's always another one that takes his place. And exclusive videos. The live, breathe, eat, sleep Formula One. Only the brave dare take on sevens. The Rugby Africa Sevens, only on Quesa Free Sports, for the fan. They are the Game Changers. Made of fierce minds, fearless hearts, and brave spirits. We know them. We want to be them. They are the bold women of sport. You can find them here. Only on Quest Sports. Subscribe now. Lots of that in this fight. We started with Tony Salem talking about the fact that he was going to beat Sting so badly that Sting's family was going to applaud the beating that he was going to give him. Well, it went south from there, and it looks like he's got under Sting's skin. So I think this one's going to kick off straight from the from the first bell. No, absolutely. Um, at the weigh-ins, they nearly got they nearly got fisticuffs at the weigh-ins. They. they um, Salam spat water in the face of Godorenda. Godorenda tries to punch him back. This fight is going to be explosive from the very, very first round. Well, it's for the WBF Africa Cruiserweight title. So it's all worth it. it These is. two pugilists are going to go at each other. Absolutely. I can't wait for it. The ladies are in the ring. The WBF officials in the ring. Hugo's in the ring. I think it's time to get this one underway. All right, let's go to our MC, Hugo Ribatika, to bring both fighters, both warriors, into the ring. Ladies and gentlemen, please be reminded that we have a special promotion running this evening. And if you buy any iFlix bundle tonight, you have the chance of winning a Huawei Y6 device, many, many Quesa caps and umbrellas. And all you need to do is uh, go out and enter bundles from a dollar only. A big thank you to our sponsors, uh, Econet, uh, Faithwear and Quesa Sports. Ladies and gentlemen, the time that we've all been waiting for, for the main event of the night. 
It is a title fight for the WBF Africa Cruiserweight title, and it is about over 10 rounds. Introducing the challenger, based out of the United Kingdom, but from Nigeria, ladies and gentlemen, Tony Sugar Salam. Here comes arguably the most confident fighter I've ever seen on Calico in the promotions and on Questy Sports, Tony the Sugar Salam. In the green and white of Nigeria, I will try not to be one-sided here, <laughs> but he's wearing the socks, he's got the flag, he's got the crowd behind him. This is, look, look he is ready. You, you certainly sounded partial, I did. Um, and he's bringing a lot of fans with him. Well, and the back of his, his gown reads, I'm coming for you. And as long as it's not me or you. <laughs> I hope not. But I think that message is for Sting Gonorenda. He's come for one thing only, and that's to get the belt. No, that, that, that's what he wants. And, and he needs it, look. He's had a career where he's had six years, seven years out of the ring. He needs to get a move on. First of all, he needs to get in the ring. And <laughs> that's after a good that, start. he needs to get a move on. <laughs> Certainly. Taking his time about it. A very lukewarm response to him from the crowd, for obvious reasons. He's fighting a local favorite. Sting Gonorenda's uh, star continues to rise in Zimbabwe. But I'll tell you what, this man looks fierce. Yeah, no. no Salam, in the UK, Salam was always a good prospect. He had his problems outside the ring. You know, he, he served the suspension, he's now back. <gasps> Let's see what he can do. Certainly, carrying the colors of Nigeria. Oh, are they the colors? I didn't know. I didn't know they were. I just, I like the gown. It's Use a nice kind of gown. Newsflash, I did. Those are the colors of Nigeria. Your home nation. Let's look at the keys to victory for Tony Salam. Look, he's got to be aggressive. He's got to go in and put it on single to render. He's got to double up his punches. What he does is always throw single shots. He's got to double up those punches. But look, 34, only 12 fights. It's almost a wasted career so far. Will he unwaste it and turn it around today? He can, he's got a golden opportunity, and the one thing that's working for him is that the man who's standing between him and the belt is also 34 years old. So he's not he's not necessarily giving anything away age age wise, but in essence, in terms of experience. These two fighters are almost the same. And ladies and gentlemen, fighting out of the red corner from Zimbabwe, based in a table view, Cape Town. The champion, Chamunorwa Sting Gonorenda. Here he comes, the home favorite. Again, a bit of a lukewarm reception. Certainly. Why is that? Coming, coming out to dreams of fighter days, hardly a party starter, but certainly the message is that every time he walks out into the ring, he's dreaming of better. Wow, he is staring. He pointed at Tony. This, this fight is going to go off. Fighters is going to keep their wits about them. You know, that, that's the most important thing. What will, let's have a look at the keys to victory for Sting Gonorenda. Use that jab. He's a taller man, he's a ranger man. 
use that jab. He's got to be patient. He can't rush his punches. And he's got to set up the punches. He's got to use that jab to set up the big right hand. And he's got a chance here. Absolutely. And then you look at their vital stats, almost the same. Almost, apart from the last one. The last one. So a lot of defeats for Gonorenda, but a lot of fights as well. Certainly. Experience is going to be a key. And that experience has got to shine through. That how, no matter how angry Salam has made him, he's got to remember how to box. Okay, let's go to our MC, Hugo Giabetta, to announce this fight. Introducing our boxers, fighting out of the blue corner, the challenger with a record of 12 fights, 11 wins and a solitary loss, hailing from Nigeria, residing in London in the United Kingdom, Tony Sugar Salah. Ladies and gentlemen, hailing from Harare, Zimbabwe, with a record of 23 fights, 11 wins, 12 losses. The champion, your hometown of favorite, fighting out of the red corner, Chamunorwa Sting Gonorenda. Referee for this evening and the final bout of the night, Ben Ngapai, judges of Patrick Mkundiwa, Pumeza Zinakile, and Edward Marshall. Ladies and gentlemen, if you'd please be upstanding for the national anthems, starting with Nigeria and then Zimbabwe.
gentlemen. The thing I love about boxing is that all the talking stops. And you've almost got to back up your talking. And at some point, you need to hit somebody. Both of these have talked smack. Both of them are staring each other down. This is going to be interesting. Gentlemen. Certainly, and you, about the rules. you can sort of see, and, and I didn't room. expect this, Keep it clean. but there's a the lot of focus on seeing. Times. May the best man win. Shake hands. Uh, and again, you're going to think I'm just saying this because I'm Nigerian. Tony <laughs> Salam looks focused. He looks focused. He does look focused. Sting looks, looks angry. ready to go. He looks angry. And the hope is that he can channel that anger and still box. Where's it come? We're about to find out. It's going to be good in a minute. Seven boy, round one. Oh, fuck up. Three stop turnings in the middle of the round across the ring. Remember what I said in the keys to victory. Jab is uber important for Sting on around. He used to use that jab and that range. He's clearly the taller guy by a few inches here. And he definitely has the bigger reach. He needs to use the jab. And so far, he started using it, and he's using it well. The good thing is that Sting hasn't come out and tried to proverbially kill Salam. He's actually sizing him up. I think That's both, a good time. I mean, both of them, like we're, we're nearly a minute in. And a punch hasn't been thrown in vain. I think both of the sides of the mark. But this one, ladies and gentlemen, will get heated very, very soon. As soon as the first punch is thrown in anger, this one is going to ignite. seem to be afraid of one another but it's actually a measure of the importance of this fight neither of them wants to make the first mistake neither of them wants to dive in 10 seconds left it's 10 second clap and last 10 seconds oh good hook great hook by salam stop that hook landed Certainly. Yeah, that I, fair? I, yeah. Is that fair? Can I do that, Harry? Can <laughs> the, I do the round to the Nigerian? The, Ni the Nigerian commentator gives it to, to Salam. And in truth, I'm inclined to agree. Because Salam looked like he, he landed the more telling blows and had the better of that round, but shaded it. He looks very composed in the corner. Is he, is he generally an unflappable fighter? That's the hook. That was the hook. Um, you know, he... I, I, again, I've spoken to him so many times in the build-up to this fight, and he genuinely believes he's another level. 
He thinks he's on another level to Steve Donarenda. He doesn't even think Sting deserves to be in the ring with him. Well, he's certainly a confident fighter. Fighter! I think it's easy to look at Sting Donarenda's record of 12 losses. Uh, but then you've got to look at who's lost to. And you realise that he's been match difficult, match hard. And I think Salam probably looks at that and probably thinks, you know what? I've lost once, you've lost 12. We're not supposed to be here together. But I think Sting will prove that he does deserve to be in this ring today. I think he already has. Because while Tony Salam has, has, has and he's used, he's used that right hook to good effect. But one has landed in the previous round. This one caught the glove and didn't get through. Tony was a very good amateur oh, prospect in the UK. And I can almost see that boxing ability now. Uh, where Sting didn't have an amateur background, he could almost just turn pro. Um, and I can almost see what... I can see Sam trying to set his punches up. Sting needs to do that. Goes to the body there for Sam. Again, just trying to make that better that's, from Sting. Triple that jab. jab you talked about. It's a very good jab as well. But he's got to be careful that Salam doesn't try to counter, which he, just, he, he nearly did there with the left hand. Remember, Salam is self -born. Good body jab. Again, a huge amount on the line for both fighters here. Huge amount. Tony Salam obviously wants to win. He wants that Dura Dollar fight in Nigeria. Our October show, Chaos in Lagos. He wants to be there. He wants to fight Dura Dollar on that show. But obviously, if he loses tonight, that, that, that fight's off. If Sting wins, Sting fights Dura Dollar. And then he's close to that world title shot that he's doing. Salam, Salam has just now taken, taken advantage of that opening. The body shots are becoming more and more. He wants that Jura Dollar uh, fight. And in fact, the back of his uh, his gown read, I'm coming for you, Jura Dollar. Now, see, I, I like that, and, and I also don't. You got to fight in front of you, focus on that first. Do you want what's in front of you first? first. Before you, you're trying to call out another opponent, it doesn't make sense to me. I've never, I've never really thought that was a wise thing to do. I guess one thing it does show is confidence, right? It does. We're also seeing a... Right, we're seeing an example of, of Sting's defense, but at the same time, that defense has got chinks in that armor, which Salam at this stage has been able to take advantage of. Stop! Tony Salam? Yeah, I, I think the first two rounds, Tony Salam, I, I really do. Um, Tony Salam had a massive exodus from boxing in 2010. Didn't come back to 2017. He's only had two fights since then. Sting on a render needs to push the pace here. He really what needs What is to. the gas tank of Tony Salam? He's been out of the ring for so long. Does the gas tank run empty? We need to know. The only way we know is if Sting pushes him. Push, push him to the wire. At this stage, Sting is letting Salam play the aggressor. But we haven't seen the counter-attack of Sting Gonarenda. What he needs now, like you say, pedal to the metal, see how much he's got in the tank as uh, Tony Salam. And when he understands and knows that, then he can decide what his game plan is going to be. Works on. Round three of this WBF African Cruiserweight title fight. Tony Salam from Nigeria, the ones beating Tony Salam in the, the colors of Nigeria, the green, white, green. And Sting got around the champion with the, with the flag color of the Maui Drake down in shots. Shots now. Yeah. 
Tony Salam now is opening those pipes. Yeah, he's starting to pick the shots if, here now nicely. If we were concerned about what's, what, what he's got in his tank, he's got quite a bit in his tank on the showing of the first three rounds. He looks really focused. Look how wide his eyes are. He's really focused on this job. He knows that 34, he can't afford to lose. He loses this, that's it. That's the ball game. It's almost like you lose your out. Possibly even the same for Sting as well. Cool. Because they're both 34. Sting has got 12 losses. I mean, it's a lot. You, you turn into a journeyman. Your money turns to journeyman money. Yeah. And, 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 and then become the challenge of fighting on away shows. It's very difficult. He's not doing he's enough, doing he, enough to... at all. He hasn't really... That right hand, it, it, he hasn't thrown his right hand at all. It's a little bit better, but he needs to do more of that. It's more like it from Sting. Big body shot there. That's more like it. That's more like it. And the crowd likes it. Like that. Returned it straight away. Does Tony Salam have a cut? Yeah, Tony Salam does have a cut. It's on his left eye. I think there is a big cut over the eye of Tony Salam. They're going to need to work magic Can in the corner. Left. There definitely is a cut over the eye of Tony Salam. Wait, step back, step back, step back, step back. Stop! Yeah, it looks like it looks like yeah, it looks like it's a cut, but it's the side of the eye, so it's okay. It's okay, yeah. It's okay. It's the side of the eye. And part was so it was to yeah. that, 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 that's the end But I think now Sting needs to do more of this. What we're watching on screen now, where he's attacking and being the aggressor. And seeing how well again that uppercut. That did damage to Tony Salam. He needs to look for that a little bit more. Yeah, that, that, that's a great response from Sting Bonarenda. That little burst at the end definitely won in the round. Uh, and that will give him confidence. Little burst, look. And, and he went to the body. Look, body. Body uppercut. Great boxing. Great boxing, great combinations. Working his opponent now. The unfortunate thing, Ade, is that when you're champion, there's only one way, and that's down. So Sting knows that, and he's going to have to box smart and effective against his opponent. Referee, referee thinks they put too much Vaseline over the eye of Tony Slam. Once it, it wipes away, they do, and they go again. If Tony Slam thought that Sting got a render, didn't deserve to be here, I think he thinks he does now. He's changed his mind, perhaps. Maybe. I think Tony Salam is the better boxer of the two. I think he needs to box. I think Sting needs to make this ugly. I, 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 I agree with that. The times that it's got ugly, it's worked to Sting's uh, uh, advantage. Yeah, I mean, uh, look at the size difference of the two. Sting is the bigger man by far. He needs to use that size advantage, get in close and start working the body of Tony Slam. Let, let's see how good that energy is. Let's see how good that gas tank is.
rushing in and also he's biding his time meaning that I think he felt that Sting has got some power and doesn't want to walk into those punches anymore. A good over arm right there from Sting. Oh! Something's happened to Conor Ren today. He's hurt himself. He's bad. He's lost his gum guard. No, no, but he's been out for... And I think something... He lost his gum guard. Oh, why? The referee's warning him for spitting out the gum shield. No, 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 no. Don't explain. What is this? Go down. Go down. Go down. Time. Back down. Not quite, not quite sure what happened there. It'd be good to see the replay at the end of this round, but Steve seems to kind of wins in pain. And, and Celeb noticed it. And, and, and that's a killer instinct of Salam. Because he lost his gum guard and Salam didn't stop. He went in for the kill. Interesting. Interesting round that. Break! Step back, step back, step back, step back. Step back. I don't push. Let's go. I watched Gonorenda against Mukagu at Carnival City mm -hmm. last year. For the first six rounds, he was fantastic. And then the gas tank went empty. Hopefully, he sorted the gas tank problem out because he's going to need to go a few more down. than six here to get the win. Yeah, and uh, it looks like Salam has got a dual game come plan. Come he wants to Stop. land the punches, yes. But it also looks like he wants to take him into the into the weeds, as it were. Take Gonorenda into the we weeds. And if he does that, then it's about who's the fitter man. It is, and look, I went to go and see Sting at his redemption gym in Cape Town. He is a fit, fit guy. Well, he looks at it, he looks a monster. These are the exchanges that then led to the loss of the gun guard. Yeah, there, look. See, there he goes, yeah. He, he looked at his hands. I wonder if he's hurt his, his hand. He clearly looked at his hand, this thing got a render. And then? And then spent the gum shield out. It's a bizarre sequence of events. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't look like they're doing any work on his, on his, uh, on his hand or anything else. Go back. Go back. Fox! Here we go, round number five. Remember, it's a ten-round fight, this one. Not a twelve rounds, a ten-round fight. But Sting got in the WBF African Cruiserweight title. The belt that he wants to hold on to, the belt that Tony Salam wants to snatch, and hopefully force a massive Duradona fight in Nigeria. Sting got a render right now is saying, nope, that's not the way it's going to happen. Tony Slam is saying, it's saying no That was the lethal counter-attack of Tony Salam. He threw him in, and then back. The right hook. Nice little right hook there from Sting got a red I think that was a great little right hand again. He could hook as well. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as advertised, we have got a tasty bout on our hands. It's funny, when Sting, when Tony Salam lands, the crowd go, ooh. Nice 
work off the ropes there from Sam. Again, land that nice little one-two down the pipe. Sting, Sting has taken too long to throw the punches. Back, back, he is, back, he's taken too back. long, and then also, there was a moment there when Tony Salam was on the ropes. He threw one jab and stood off, rather than carrying on, perhaps with a triple, and then a body shot. So Sting isn't working the combinations well enough yet. I think Sting has a problem with his left hand. I've been watching him now all this round, and he really isn't throwing that left hand with any conviction. Look, it's all right. It's all right that he's not really throwing that left with any conviction. I think he has a problem with his left. Great, step back, step back. Step back, step back, step back. Well, let's have a look at that. Time's on his left. Not throwing that left anymore. He was throwing it with so much better. He's now throwing it right, right and left. Right, let's have a look at that round. We're halfway through. And still, it looks like when it comes to the exchanges, even when Sting is throwing the better punches, Salam's counter-attack is so good that he's coming out on the better side. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, I, who's winning the fight for you so far? For me, I would say Tony Salam. And, and not even just shading it. I think Tony Salam has a healthy lead in the fight. Yeah. I, I think I gave Conor the one round. I've got Tony Salam up 4-1 going to this round six. And we're now at the halfway stage. Fine, fine, fine. Boxer. Now he's working, he's working the jab a lot more now. Starts the rounds off aggressive. That's a little break. Watch and your then feet. Finishes, strong. finishes strong. For sure. And again, that's enough to win these rounds. Sting is looking tired for me. That jab there is not good enough. It's a lazy jab. I agree with you. I mean, if you look at the at the two fighters, yeah. Sting actually looks like he's been out of the ring longer than two. Hey, step back, step back, step back, step back, step back, step back. Hey. He's doing all right as well. Let's go. Looks a bit lazy on his feet, the Sting Monorenda. He needs to become more aggressive. Focus on Tony Salam is stunning. Always looking for that opening. Always maintaining eye contact. Look, Sting's still in the fight. We're only at the halfway stage. But I mean, he, needed, he needs to do something to, to get the, the real attention of Tony Slam. And right now, I don't think he's doing it. Tony 
Sabu Slam looks like it can get rid of he can get rid of Sting if he wants to here. Stop! Wow! Oh, wow! What a round by Tony Salam! What a round by the Nigerian Tony Salam! What a round! And he definitely hurt the well champion. Done for Sting. I don't know the minutes enough to survive this. I'm not I'm not sure. Sting has got enough in the tank. He's breathing very heavily. He's definitely hurt. After this exchange, where Tony Salah saw the opening and went after his man. But did Tony Salah waste energy trying to get him out of it? Fair point, but being beaten will take out a lot more energy than trying to enforce the beat. Yeah, absolutely. The biggest round, the biggest round of the fight so far. Oh, will Tony Tony, Salam. Will he jump on him? Tony Salam can come what? out and try and put him away now. If you're Tony, you've got to be careful, but at the same time, you've got to jump on Sting on a render now. You've really got to put the pressure on. He was close to being out of there. And I think he's only a couple of punches away from really getting to really sorry getting Sting on a render out of there. Smart boxing by Tony Salah. He knew he wasn't getting the exchanges and so he held. Tony Slam's hook is a thing of beauty, it really is. Both the left and right hand, but his, his right hand, that hook is stunning. And again, I, I think that's from the amateur experience, the amateur background. He's honed his craft, and I think he's doing well right now to really show all his tools in his tool bag. Step back, step back, step back, step back. You see, it's opportunities like that. He's got Tony in the corner. And what did he do? He just stood off it. Same situation, the reverse. Tony attacks. Great jab from Tony Salam. Great jab. Oh, another great jab. Another jab. Three jabs in a row. Four in a row. Five. Wow. Oh, knocking the head back. Oh, this is a stunning performance. It really is from Tony Slam. Honestly, showing the full repertoire of punches here. Again, wow. You cannot miss with that left hand. I know we spoke about the fact that the jab would be effective for the bigger man, but it looks like the smaller man, Tony Salam, is using the jab to greater effect. It has been a, a stunning performance so far for Salam. Sting is still there, he's still dangerous, he's still big, he's still strong. But so far, unfortunately, he's getting beaten to the punch. And he's looking really, really good. Again, just uses that foot movement to avoid the punches, get out of the corner. Last 35 seconds of round number seven. And they really need to give Sting got to render a talking to in that corner. He needs to come out and really do something. Come on, come on, come on. It's, it's the offense of, of uh, Sting got to render that's a problem. Because his defense hasn't worked. And in truth, if your defense hasn't worked, what do you need to do? You need to really attack. And he hasn't done that either. Break! Break! He just looks so good. Stop! That's another salam round for me. Another salam. Another big salam round as well. For sure.
plan B here. What's the plan B? We need to know what else we need to do. Because right now it's not working. This is when your corner needs to be at your side telling you what you need to do because this fight is going away from him here. Go back, go back. Here we go, round eight. Remember, this is the 10 round so fight. For the WBF African Cruiserweight title. Sting Gonorenda, the current champion, with the Zimbabwean flag down his shorts in the black trunks. And Tony Salam, the challenger, in the green and white.
know he's had a tool, does he? Does he? Jumps in in straight lines and doesn't move the head Absolutely. And that style can work with the opponents that he's been facing yeah. in the last three bouts. But Tony Salam seems to have come with a game plan. Oh, oh, exactly. oh, yeah. Agreed. Yeah. It was right. going to walk in a straight come line. Back, back, back. Back. He's got a bobby weave a little bit. Because he's getting caught constantly as he comes in. That's why he's been peppered with that jab. Peppered with the right hand. Touch gloves, touch gloves. Take Go back rounds. to your corners. Go back to your corners. Go back. What can Sting got to render do here to? What can Sting got to render do to retain his title? What can Tony Slam do to almost stop the authority and almost take this out of the judges' hands? We'll soon find out in the next two, two and a bit minutes here, yeah. and uh, we'll see. Tony Salam with, with a wry smile on his face. I think he secretly knows that he's done enough here. Yeah. Referee has taken a point away 
Tony Salam. What did you do? What did you do? Come in. 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 Singonarina looks What's concerned, yeah, he wants to get on with it. He knows that he's behind in this fight. It's now or never. It's now or never, ladies and gentlemen. Grab your popcorn. In this last minute, it's going to be explosive. Boxing, but then 
Tony Salam still had more in the tank. This was in the earlier rounds. Where he nearly knocked him down. He was hurt. He was hurt. Hello. All right. We have a decision. We're going to go to our MC this evening. Hugo Rabikata with the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, please be reminded that we do have one more fight after this. So please don't go home just yet. We will also be having a draw for those many, many prizes that we promised you a little bit earlier. Ladies and gentlemen, following a majority points of victory, and still the WBF Africa Cruiserweight Champion, Stan Gorondo! Still the champion, Stan Gorondo. That's how the judges have seen it. Here in the commentary booth, we thought that Tony Salam had done enough. But the judges obviously scored it differently. What a fight. Two pugilists who went out in hammer and tongs. But the judges have, vote by majority points decision, to sting Conorenda. What an interesting result sting, here. Sting. If we can, both guys, both guys, Sting, let's talk quickly. Tony, Tony, wait, come on, come on. Sting, let, let's talk to you first. Did, did you think, did you think you did enough to win the fight? Yeah, thank you. First of all, I want to thank God, the Almighty, who made me to reign today. Um, I'm still the champion. Yeah, or well, coming back to your question, um, you know, I'm champion, and I've got a strategy. I was going uh, counter-attacking. You understand what I'm saying? If he throws one, I go one, two. You know, most of the punches were coming to my, to my guard, and I was scoring straight to the point. You know what I'm saying? So. You know, the judges are not stupid. They see exactly who is landing, you know. A, fire, a punch that is perfect, that can be seen by everyone else. If you keep punching on top of guard, then it's no point, you understand know what I'm saying? He, he seemed to hurt you in round five. How hurt were you? Were you hurt in round five? Yeah, you know, what happened is, like, you know, in any fight, anything can happen, you know. I respect him, he's a good boxer, he's a strong boxer, you know, he's a strong boy, you understand what I'm saying? So, I cannot say he's bad, you know what I'm saying? He was coming back, he's a strong boy, he was coming back to me, I was punching, and then when he comes back to me, you know, I was hitting on top of guard, you understand what I'm saying? You know, it's boxing, if you land a clear punch, it's recorded, if you hit on top of guard, then there's no point. Okay, let's bring in the challenger, Tony. Tony, I know you're very disappointed. Tony, I know you're very disappointed. Tony, did you think you did enough to win that fight? I think I won the crowd. I don't want the Nigerian crowd. I want the Zimbabwean crowd. Be honest. I want you to be honest. You've got children. You believe in God. Do I lose this fight? Please tell me. Do I lose this fight? Do I lose this fight? Did I lose this fight? Tony, 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 let me have a word, Tony. Do you, do you want a rematch? I don't know what I want right now. I don't, I'm so disappointed. 
I'm so I'm, I'm so disappointed. At least I would have won seven rounds, at least minimum. Come on. If this guy is an honest guy, I actually want him to. Do you win this fight? Do you win this fight, please? If you want the rematch. Do you win this fight, please? Listen to me. Listen to me. Please tell me. Do you win this fight? Listen to me. Do you win this fight? Listen. You want the rematch? Do you win this fight? You want the rematch? Anytime, anywhere, any place. One second. Let me bring in the promoter's song. Obviously, there's always going to be one unhappy person. There's going to be a happy person. Can we get the rematch on? And when can we get the rematch on between these guys? This is now headline chaos in Lagos, 26th of October. Sting's going to go to Nigeria and try and take it in his own backyard. He'll have a different set of judges there. Might be a different result. I'm not sure. We've spoken. We may have scored it differently. It was a majority split decision, I think. But in the end, Sting did well. He stood 10 rounds against someone with a great pedigree. And you can't take that away from him. I can understand why Tony's upset. But let's just put it onto the cards and put him in Nigeria, 26th of October. Wednesday, Friday, fight nights, chaos in Lagos. Thank you. Just to confirm, you're, you're confirming now, Sting going to render Tony Salam, October, Nigeria. 100% Ade, see you there. Fantastic. Well done. Well done, Sting going to render, retaining his title, unlucky Tony Salam, and the loss. Thanks very much to Ade and the team in the ring. Oh my goodness. What a result. The judges seeing it very differently to nearly the bulk of the crowd here because it looked like Tony Salam had done enough to take this fight. But it, clearly, the last rounds where Sting Konarenda attacked Tony Salam were enough to swing this fight. But as you heard, here on Friday Fight Nights with Quest Sports, it, it's going to happen on the 26th of October. Chaos in Lagos. Chambonorwa, Sting Gonorenda is going to take on Tony Salam in Lagos. Chaos in Lagos. And it will be chaos in Lagos. Let's have a look at some of the results earlier tonight. It seems such a long time ago that Mandondo beat Joa, making her debut from Namibia. That was a good fight as well. Patricia Apollo got the decision over Hong Kamona. Lucas and Ndafaluba. Hussein, Itaba, and the big title fight. Peter Bambini, that was a strange decision against Masari. They might have to do that one again. Very strange. And obviously this one, this season, the one that I don't think a lot of people are happy about, Stingo Narenda, defending his belt against Tony Salam. And as you heard, Sol Lockenberg, the promoter of Calico, the person said, look, we're going to do that again. 26th October, of October. 26th of October. I'm going to be there. I hope you're there. I I'll fly in for it. Yeah, but look. This is boxing, isn't it? It happens in boxing. It does. But it overall, it's been a fantastic night of boxing from the conference center here in Harare, Zimbabwe. Loads of fights, fantastic atmosphere. And look, this is it. We go to Cape Town again on the 28th of October, sorry, 28th of September. And that's boxing. It's been fantastic. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Until next time, have a fantastic evening. Good night.
Kwese TV is keeping you company anytime and anywhere.